One way or another, thank you for joining us of night two of TNVC and NGI's V-Shot. All right. So I am, once again, I am Augie Kim, uh, Director of Operations for TNVC. I have with me here Bill Peterson, Director of Training for TNVC, as well as Eric Butler, uh, one of our LE sales reps, as well as a Special Projects Manager at TNVC. It's not my real name, actually, but <laughs> I'm the Lizard King. <laughs> so... Um, Couple of notes again while while people are getting logged on while we uh, finished working through um, some of our technical issues getting on the live stream tonight. Uh, we understand that you guys had some that, that some people had some issues with the uh, Safari Land coupon code that went out on the V Shot email last night. Um, I'm just going to let you know uh, we we got that fixed. So if you tried to use that coupon code sometime between sometime last night or sometime this morning before it got fixed. Uh, go in and try it again. It should work for you now. Um, there, there, there were, were a couple of issues, but, but thankfully uh, we got them resolved uh, very quickly this morning. Once again, if you haven't already, if you want to receive the coupon codes, like the Safari Lane coupon code, like some of the other coupon codes that we're going to have coming out for you today, as well as promotional pricing on some of our products and some of our new releases, make sure that you go online, you go to our website, tnvc.com slash vshot. That's vshot with two T's, V-S-H-O-T-T. And sign up with your email. You only need to sign up once during the week, and you'll be entered for all of the all of the promotional pricing. You'll be entered for all of the giveaways, all of the coupon codes. And again, since we know that not everybody remembered to sign up uh, before VShot began, shame, shame. Um, we are going to have all of those archived uh, in, in those emails. So even if you jump on night two, night three of VShot you will still have access to all of those promotional materials so it's not too late to uh so it's not too late to sign up yep not too late and again grand prize giveaway for anybody that doesn't know already uh our grand prize drawing on friday is a tnv uh thin filmed white phosphor pvs 14 uh, Gen 3 auto gated with an Elbit Systems of America image intensifier tube. Um, that's going to come with a lot of great goodies as well, including uh, Nicorium camo wraps um, and uh, a, t a free TNVC Mohawk of choice. So make sure that you sign up. Uh, that's our grand prize giveaway, but we've got a lot of other great giveaways coming up all throughout the week and tonight um, and, and, and coming up. All right, so before, uh, before we kind of talk about the new retail products, the new individual commercial products that we've got, um, that, that we've got on tap this year for you, uh, obviously SHOT Show has always traditionally been a, a, a firearms industry show. It's always been, it, it's really supposed to be a show for dealers, for vendors, for manufacturers, for everybody to get, to, for, for everybody to get, to get together and do the business of, of running the firearms industry. Um, with that, one of the things that we are very excited to be announcing this year during V-Shot um, is not really a commercial product, but it's really the expansion of our TNVC and NGI dealer program. So we have always had um, a healthy cadre of dealers uh, you know, that, that, that buy and, and retail some of our products. We do provide dealer pricing, uh, but it's always kind of been at, at one basic level. Um, this year we are introducing a tiered dealer program. Uh, so there will be the traditional level dealer, which is this kind of the same dealer program that we have always had since we started. Uh, the next level up, which of course is going to require a little bit more of an initial investment and an annual investment, is going to be our commercial level dealer program. Uh, and then finally, we're going to have a professional le level dealer program. Now, at each of these dealer tiers, you know, you're going to get access to certain pricing and to certain different types of products at those different product levels that we'll kind of talk about coming on throughout the week. Um, obviously, not everybody wants to hear all about the dealer programs. Uh, so, so if you want to find out more about the dealer programs, if you want to sign up about about uh, to be a dealer, or if you're already one of our dealers and you're interested in stepping up to the commercial or the professional level, please email our director of sales, Chris Huber. His email address is chris 
C-H-R-I-S at TNVC.com. So everybody's favorite thing about SHOT Show, of course, is all of the new products that all of the different companies uh, are rolling out. Usually, you know, one of everybody's favorite things to do is to go from booth to booth and, and look at all of the new products and hear about all the new products uh, that are coming out for that year uh, within the industry. Because we don't really have, because there's not a SHOT Show this year, uh, we don't really have a booth to set up, but we still have a pretty, uh, we pretty have, have a pretty healthy docket of new products, some of which y'all may have seen before and some of which may come as a surprise to you. Um, so I'm going to go through some of the new products that we have available for 2021 uh, or that, that are either available now or are going to be available very soon or are coming sometime this year. Um, I'm not going to go into a super lot of detail on every single one. I could. We would be here all night, and I'd just be talking about the stuff on this coffee table. But we have uh, a lot of content all throughout the week that's going to go into detail on pretty much every single one of these products. So this is really just kind of a, a new product showcase for, for us to tell you what the new products are this year. Uh, this is not all of our new products. Um, there are going to be some other exciting announcements that come out throughout the week. Uh, but in terms of our major new products, um, one of the newest products that we've released, uh, that we released actually late last year um, during our stocking stuffer sale, but is still you know, generally considered a new product, uh, is our NVG PPE. Um, which is basically a, an improved night vision pouch. So these are available separately uh, for $65 a piece. They're currently available in Ranger Green and Multicam. Uh, they're going to be coming in a variety of other colors as well later on this year. Um, it's a pretty simple uh, but also pretty nifty um, padded pouch, padded soft pouch. It's got two compartments. It's got an expandable section uh, that, that allows you to carry not just your NVGs, but a lot of the associated gear that you will need. And these NVG PPE pouches will also be coming with all of our TNV branded systems uh, starting this year. Another addition that we have to uh, all of our TNV systems, and again, also available separately, is our NVG field cleaning kit. Uh, this will come with all of our night vision systems. It's also, uh, but, but you can also buy it separately. Again, real simple. This is not meant so that you can do a deep clean to your NVGs. It's got a lens pen with a little retractable brush. Um, it has got a microfiber lens cleaning cloth and it has cat crap. Cat crap is an anti-fog paste. People ask us all the time. You know, we are at the Light Force uh, Southeast HQ here in Pooler, Georgia. Uh, when it's not January, it tends to be a very humid place. People ask us all the time about how to prevent their NVGs from fogging. We have probably used just about every anti-fog product that is out there. Yeah. And cat crap has turned out to be the best product to do so. But then when we tell people to put cat crap on their NVGs, they think we're crazy, they think we're messing with them, and, and they ignore our advice. Yeah, you don't have to like chase down a neighborhood cat or anything. It's, it's just a product, it's not actual cat shit. <laughs> <laughs> so what I've got right here is kind of, you know, a lot of different new products uh, rolled into one. Um, first of all, uh, this, again, was released late last year, one of the uh, most highly anticipated releases that we teased last year during SHOT Show, uh, during SHOT Show 2020, is the TNV DTNVS, Dual Tube Night Vision System. Um, it's, the housing is manufactured by Acton Black out of Luxembourg, uh, and it is basically very similar to the DTNVS that a lot of y'all might be familiar with. Um, but it is, uh, they've reduced the weight quite a bit, and they've also added the ability to have interpupillary stop adapters attached to them. Uh, DTNVS is going to be available uh, not only in um, the standard L3 Harris. Uh, L3 Harris thin filmed green phosphor and L3 Harris unfilmed white phosphor. However, <clears throat> for you V-Shot registrants, we have a special deal uh, available that you will be receiving by email. Extremely limited contract overrun DTNVS 
DTNVS units using Elbit thin filmed F9400 YG mil spec image intensifier tubes. These are from a contract overrun. We bought a whole bunch of these YG tubes to, to fulfill uh, some contracts that we had on spec. Uh, these are not a normal part of our product line, but we had some of these high performing mil spec tubes left over. Um, they are not uh, L3 unfilmed tubes, but again, they're extremely high performing mil spec tubes up to all of the mil spec standards. And we will have 30 of them available uh, for purchase. Um, they'll be shipping probably they'll be shipping in February, uh, but they will be available exclusively through your VShot email. Uh, when you get your VShot email tonight, there will be a link. Like I said, uh, these are contract overruns. We don't have a whole lot of them. There are only 30 of them available. Um, it's limit one per customer, uh, but in terms of you know getting a high-performing white FOSS mil spec night vision system right now, it's probably going to be one of the best one of the best options that you have. Uh, and for those of you that are going to be upset that you know you have called us in the past and asked us you know how can I get my night vision faster? Do you have anything that you can ship me faster? Please understand that these are contract overrun tubes. We did not know literally until this week how many of them would be needed for the contract and how many we would ha be have available to sell separately. Right. Now, along with the, uh, the release of the, the DTNVS, did you, did you want to add something? No, did you? <laughs> So along with the uh, along with the DTNVS, um, we also have partnered with uh, Nicorium that has you know has made a big splash uh, in the last couple of months with their 3M vinyl NVG wraps. Um, I am a little bit of a multicam freak, so pretty much all of these are in multicam. Uh, but we are introducing skins. Uh, we are introducing skins for the DTNVS, the PVS 31 Alpha. L3 Harris BNVD, the BNVD 1531, as well as the L3 Harris Cold Weather Battery Pack. So these, uh, and they're also available for RNVGs, DTNVGs, PVS 14s, and a whole host of other uh, other night vision systems. These DTNVS skins uh, and PVS 31 Alpha skins are currently exclusive to TNVC. The only place that you're going to be able to order them starting tonight is going to be at TNVC.com. Boom. The next thing that we have is another system that kind of has, has raised a whole lot of eyebrows. Uh, in, in, in the past couple of months, and that is the Optics One e uh which is basically a miniature thermal monocular that can clip on to the end of a night vision device, and it provides a thermal overlay uh, into your night vision system. So it allows you to use uh, standard um, analog image intensification as well as, as well as having a thermal channel so that you, so that you have improved detection capabilities. Uh, the the e Cody, you know, was previously restricted to uh, government sales only. Um, we have, you know, we at TNVC, we've always believed that uh, the the qualified citizen, the U.S. citizen, should be entitled to to own whatever uh, what, whatever the um, the military is able to own. Now, there are certain things that obviously are restricted by law or by um, you know, agency regulation, but within reason, if there is something that, if, if there is something that is available, if there's some sort of capability, we believe that, that, you know, everybody should have, um, should have access to that. And that's not about, you, you know, uh, Bill and I are both military veterans. Eric here is, is a, a law enforcement veteran. Uh, we have all been um, a part of the state, and not a one of us believes in a state monopoly on capabilities. Uh, so whenever there's some sort of product uh, wherein there are no legal restrictions to having that be available to the civilian market and to the commercial market, we are always working to have those available. So the e -Cody is actually a direct product of some of those efforts. We were able to talk to Optics One and, and, and convince them that, that you know this is something that, that is worth releasing to the commercial market yeah so you're welcome ac 130s next year 
<laughs> That'll be a good one. Those, th those, those are mostly thermal, though, right? Yeah. Um, in addition to the E-Cody, uh, you know, a lot of the legacy PAS-29 Alpha Cody's have been released on the market, but a big problem has been the supply of accessories to go along uh, with the legacy Cody because it is an end-of-life cycle product. Um, along with the E-Cody, which is already available for sale now, uh, this during Q1 of 2021, we're going to be releasing the full suite of accessories for the E-Cody, including the six-cell GPS battery pack, along with the accompanying cable, as well as a cable that will go from the GPS battery pack to a uh, BINVIS style system like the PVS31 Alpha or the GPNVG, as well as a Y splitter cable that will go from the L3 Harris cold weather battery pack or the uh, GPNVG's 4 CR123 battery pack and power both the goggles and the E-Cody. We've also got some great products uh, from, from OpsCore to kind of talk to you about. And again, some of these are not strictly new, uh, but, but they are products that, that, we, that, that you know, haven't been uh, very well known in the market uh, that, that, that you know, we are, are very excited about. Um, one of the big ones is these NVG Snap Shields. So these NVG snap shields are uh, originally designed for the PVS-31, uh, but by reversing the rubber grommet on them that secures them to the NVGs, they can actually fit on any NVG with a PVS-14 style ocular lens assembly. Um, these things attach to the NVGs, and as you can see here, they basically provide a little bit of eye protection uh, with, with the NVGs. They also provide not impact. a lick of drop protection. <laughs> Limited impact protection. And that is why it is always important to have a lanyard on your NVGs, even when you are doing, uh, even when you are doing demonstrations, which I believe one of our special guests, John Dufresne, is going to talk to us about later on this week. That was the sound of money, folks. <laughs> <laughs> Scratch and dent sale, anyone? No, that's not going to happen. Um, Along with the snap shield, uh, we've also got this OpsCore Force on Force mandible. Uh, so OpsCore is, is pretty well known for, for a, lot of their, uh, a lot of their mandibles, which interface with their fast series of helmets. Uh, but the Force on Force mandible is kind of a lesser known variant of it. So it's got a, a carbon fiber composite chassis, but it's also got a full, um, it's got this full mesh netting that goes all the way around. Uh, and these tabs can also be secured behind your neck uh, so that when you're doing any kind of force on force with simunitions or UTMs, it provides some, it provides you protection uh, for, uh, for, from those rounds. Um, something to note, obviously the snap shields definitely work with the force on force mandible. However, if you are engaged on any kind of force on force operations, we would start uh, training we would still recommend that you use some sort of standalone eye protection because there are a couple of gaps. And obviously the, uh, snap, the, the snap shields rotate with the goggles and they can rotate out of the way. The final ops core, uh, the final ops core product that we have to introduce is this uh, battery pack attach panel. Uh, so you can see here, I've got the uh, L3 Harris cold weather battery pack um, installed in it, but it's real simple, attaches, attaches to any helmet with a fast SF Velcro pattern. Mm -hmm. um, it's just got a, it's just got kind of shock cord and a little, a, a little bit of retention there, and then it sticks right to the back of the helmet. Even if you don't have the fast SF Velcro pattern, you can go get your own adhesive loop Velcro pile and uh, put it so that it'll attach. So it'll, it'll be compatible so long as you have some adhesive Velcro. Couple more new products, and this is really just an update of, of an older product, but uh, Core Survival has upgraded their, uh, their, their popular Hellstar 6 family to the Hellstar, Gen, uh, to the Hellstar 6 Gen 3 Plus. Um, compared to the previous Hellstar 6s, uh, you can see here it's just got a slightly flatter and slightly clearer lens assembly that provides you just a little bit better illumination. So that's the Hellstar 6 Gen 3 Plus from Core Survival. It comes in all of the standard models uh, that the uh, 
that, that the Hellstar 6 has come in. We're also introducing this year, and we don't have a firm ETA on these, but these are the Carson binocular night vision device. Uh, they are another articulating binocular night vision, uh, binocular night vision system. Um, they are uh, unique in that they, in that they are a manual gain system. There aren't a whole lot of manual gain binocular systems currently available on the commercial market. Um, so it's providing another option if that's some if that's a capability that you're looking for. Also want to mention, uh, and again, these are not new products per se, but the Wilcox Industries RAID X, uh, which is a um, Class 3B restricted power laser. Uh, this is not on our website because it is a, a restricted power laser. And again, this is this is one of those things where we where, where we said. Uh, you know there are unfortunately some legal barriers to us selling uh, selling Class 3B lasers on the commercial market, uh, but the Raid X is available to military and law enforcement. As is another laser that y'all have probably seen quite a bit of, um, which is the L3 Harris uh, Next Generation Aiming Laser, or the NGAL or NGAL, depending on how how you want to pronounce that acronym. Um, Again, it's both the RAID X and the NGAL use a uh, Vexel Illuminator, real ma rear mounted beam divergence knob. We'll be talking a little bit more about these uh, later on during the week. Another product that we're uh, very excited um, to, be ha to, to have this year is the Pixels on Target Voodoo S. Uh, so a lot of y'all probably, you know, look at something like this and, and, and you figure that this is uh, you know, this is the, the BAE Skeet IR. Um, this is not the Skeeter. Uh, this is actually, an, th this is actually uh, an improved version made by Pixels on Target. It is a six, it, it's a 640 system, uh, 12 micron. Um, we are still doing uh, some, some testing and evaluation on this system, but it is extremely, uh, it, it is extremely promising for ever, from everything that we've seen. DOD has already done quite a bit of testing on this system, and so we're we're really excited about the capabilities of the, uh, of this package. And and you know, the Voodoo S, while it's not going to be uh, inexpensive, I think that a lot of a lot of people are going to be surprised by the price um, in in this class of thermal clip-on device. So that's the uh, major new products um, that we have that we have for uh, for 2021 except a couple more things we've been talking a lot about restricted products that uh, haven't you know haven't really been available to the commercial market so probably one of the things that we are the most excited about announcing this year is the fact that we have been able uh, you know working with L3 Harris the PVS 31 Alpha BNVD with the 2376 uh, minimum FOM unfilmed white phosphor si systems are going to be commercially available through TNVC. These are not gray market systems. They are not contract overrun systems. These are going to be a regularly stocked item at TNVC. I say regularly stocked, and we've got a lot of them waiting to go out to you, uh, but we do expect that uh, they will sell out pretty quickly. So they may end up being backordered. We are going to be shipping these starting in February, but again, they will be able to be backordered. They will come with the full factory warranty. They will come with the with the factory support, the manufacturer support, if anything happens to them. Uh, and they will also come with um, the uh, individual tube data records. So you'll get your spec sheets for every one of the tubes, which is also something that has often been missing uh, from a lot of commercial, for, from a lot of gray market systems that have become available on the market. So PVS 31 BNVD available now for the commercial market, $13,700 for the full kit, including the cold weather battery pack, uh, and the PVS 31 alphas, as well as the uh, 25 inch cable uh, to connect the two of them. Um, you will have to buy the wrap separately uh, if, you want, if you want them to be in any color other than black. However, for our V-Shot registrants, we have special promotional pricing on the PVS 31s, $13,500. 
and the first 50 units are going to have tan focus stop rings. So they are going to have just a little tan accent to them. This is something that's been available on some contract units in the past, but it hasn't been really been available uh, and, and isn't all that common. So we thought it would be a nice distinctive little touch. Those are going to be limited to the first 50 units, $13,500, only available uh, to V-Shot registrants through a special link that you're going to get um, that, that you're going to get in your email. If you're a V-Shot registrant and you want the promotional price, but you don't want the accent rings, uh, you will also be able to get the standard black units um, it, with the promotional pricing. The PVS 31s, uh, the PVS 31 BNVDs are also going to be available to dealers. However, they're only going to be available to dealers at the at the professional level. Uh, so that's the top tier dealer level. Along with the uh, PBS 31 Alphas, we're also releasing the, P the uh, BNVD 1531s uh, commercially, which are a variant of the uh, PBS 31, except they use PBS 14 style optics, so they have an adjustable diopter. Uh, they're a little bit less expensive, and they also have an onboard IR illuminator. That's also going to be going live tonight for order. Uh, the BNVD 1531s, we expect those to be delivered in Q2 of 2021. Um, and I don't have one out on the table because you all know what it looks like, but we are also going to be offering L3 Harris factory PVS 14 systems. Again, 2376 plus FOM, um, unfilmed white phosphor. So again, that's 23, that's 2376 minimum FOM. Um, but we're extremely proud to be offering, uh, all of these L3 factory products. Uh, the PVS 14s again will be available to dealers as well. Uh, but only beginning at the commercial level. So those are the new products that we have uh, that, that we have for you. Um, some V-Shot promotional pricing that you can only get if you sign up on our website at tnvc.com slash V-Shot with two T's. Let's roll some video. What's up guys? Welcome to TMC and Night Goggles virtual new product showcase and educational event. Today we're going to be talking about what makes TNVC and NGI quality, as well as talking about some new products that I think you guys are going to be very excited about. Let's get it started. That's good, right? <laughs> no? Run it again. Tell you talking about new something, some new products, man. All right, cool. <clears throat> Hi. I'm Augie Kim, Director of Operations for TNVC, and I'm here with Sam Houston, Special Projects Manager and one of our former build managers. Today we're going to talk to you guys a little bit about what separates TNV and NGI branded night vision devices from other systems available out there on the market. In the past several years, and especially in this past year, the night vision industry has experienced tremendous growth. Even before 2020, night vision and thermal hunting was considered to be one of the fastest growing segments of the firearms industry, and the introduction of more budget-friendly entry-level devices such as the Night Goggles XLS series of Gen 3 white phosphor devices has made night vision more accessible to more people than ever before. With more and more people getting interested in night vision and more and more vendors taking notice, it can be difficult for beginners or even experienced night vision end users to understand the difference between different products and different vendors when it comes to selecting a night vision device. Ultimately, there are only a few manufacturers of image intensifier tubes, with the main U.S. manufacturers of Generation 3 image intensifiers being L3 Harris and Elbit Systems America, or ESA. While there are other foreign manufacturers out there, such as Photonis and Harder Digital, L3 Harris and ESA 
are the two main sources for Gen 3 tubes on the U.S. market and DOD contractors for U.S. military night vision systems. TNVC's quality starts with our tubes. All of TNVC's premium mil-spec night vision systems are built with mil-spec quality tubes, such as Elbit YH and YG series tubes, not commercial grade tubes like the SLH and SLG series. Our L3 Harris mil-spec tubes, while selected from 18UM contract batches, are custom spec for TNVC by L3 Harris to ensure that we receive only the highest quality tubes that many vendors would consider to be hand select. In addition to using mil-spec quality image intensifiers, our in-house TNV branded night vision systems are built using the highest quality components from US DOD contractors including all optical lens assemblies and PVS-14 housing assemblies. Each TNV and NGI system is considered a semi-custom unit. We do not use third-party assemblers or drop ship our night vision devices. Each unit is built to order for an individual customer in-house by our build techs and overseen by our build manager, Jacob Valencia, who has over 13 years of experience building high-performance optics at US Optics and Night Optics USA prior to joining TNVC and Night Goggles. All of our dual tube goggle systems are also individually matched tubes. We do not just pull whatever tubes are available out of the carton and throw them into a dual tube system. Instead, we carefully inspect and match each tube to ensure that the individual tube specs not only meet our high quality standards individually, but that they are also within tolerances to be used in dual tube systems so that users get the best possible experience with their dual tube goggles and that there's no drastic difference between each eye. Each dual tube system is also checked and adjusted for collimation to within mil spec requirements for aviation goggles using a TS3895 test set and collimation bridge. While the Night Goggles XLS systems do use Elbit Systems of America commercial grade tubes allowing them to be sold at a lower cost than TNVC's mil-spec units, everything else about the Night Goggles systems in terms of components and quality is identical to TNVC systems other than the commercial spec tubes. No other corners are cut to provide a low cost but high quality system. The fact that all of our TNVC and NGI branded systems are built in-house means that we are confident enough in the quality not only of these tubes and components we use, but the workmanship of each unit and allows us to offer our lifetime limited warranty which covers the image intensifier tube for a period of 10 years from the date of purchase while the night vision system itself is warrantied for the life of the device. Also this warranty is fully transferable on all of our systems meaning that it doesn't matter if you're the first owner or the 15th owner, you will still get coverage under the warranty. Once assembled and inspected according to our QAQC checklist to ensure that the device meets our high quality standards, each unit receives a serialized unique identification tag, or UID. Rather than using fancy stickers or logos or labels, each TESA UID label is 100% compliant with MIL Standard 130 requirements for DOD and U.S. government inventory management systems, including for machine readability and durability. And now, a word from our sponsors. Jamie Caldwell here with Core Survival. Tommy Young here, Core Survival. Hank Miner here, Law Enforcement Product Manager for Core Survival. I want to talk to you today about the Hellstar 6. The slider that Core Survival has came out with is amazing. We're going to talk to you today about the Hellstar 5 XO K9 model. The Hellstar 6, it offers you four different functions. Two overt settings and then two IR settings. In the middle of a night emergency, we need to resupply. The LSM by Core Survival would have been perfect. The K9 model is a three function stroke one overt or visible light and two covert or IR lights. You need to figure out which of our two body styles is going to work best for you. Whether it's our XO line, which gives you two or three functions, or it's our Hellstar 6, which gives you four different functions. Please check us out at coresurvival.com to order your next Hellstar product. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness.
One of the advantages that TNVC and Night Goggles has is that not only do we have our own training program and support high quality training programs like Green Line Tactical, but the majority of our technical staff, including Augie and myself, come from professional end user backgrounds before becoming enthusiasts and working at TNVC. And we've used this, these things in faraway lands against lots of bad people. And we've incorporated several changes to the standard equipment based on our experiences. The first and probably most obvious difference is that we've done away with the old green lunch sack that most night vision devices are shipped with, or bulky hard sided cases that are sometimes included with night vision devices. Instead, we've commissioned the creation of a new soft sided padded case. Designed by TNVC and manufactured by Tactical Tailor, each case has multiple compartments with multiple ways to access them, allowing you to not only securely carry and transport your single or dual tube night vision device, but any accessories you might need as well. The main pocket can support a dual tube night vision device with an e cody or even dual PVS-14s and a FLIR breech, while the secondary compartment can hold ancillary equipment and can be accessed either from the main compartment or from the outside. The secondary compartment is also expandable, allowing you to carry a mount, battery pack, or any other equipment that you might want to keep with your night vision device. It'll even accommodate a cry nightcap. The new night vision pouch isn't designed to be the end-all be-all of night vision cases, but it is designed to be a value-added alternative to some of the more useless alternatives that come with many night vision devices. Even if you don't use it for your night vision, it's highly adaptable general purpose pouch that gives you a lot of options for different mission essential gear that provides some protection for the contents, but it's not overly bulky or difficult to transport. And it will also be available separately for $65 retail. Another new addition to our TNV and NGI night vision systems is the field cleaning kit. Again, the field cleaning kit is not meant to be an all-encompassing NVG maintenance kit but rather it includes the basic items you're likely to need in the field to keep your goggles mission ready. It includes a lens pen with a retractable lens cleaning brush to remove dirt and debris from your lenses, as well as a half ounce container of cat crap anti-fog paste and a microfiber cloth to apply it with and to clean your lenses. Over the years, we've tried all variety of lens cleaning and anti-fog solutions, but we've always come back to cat crap. So we figured we'd just include it with our night vision devices instead of making people have to wonder whether we're being serious or if we're messing with them when we tell them they need to put cat crap on their lenses. Again, the field cleaning kit is also available separately on our website or through our dealers. The last item now included with all of our dual tube systems are the Acton Black bikini covers. While most night vision devices will come with daylight pinhole covers and cap plugs to protect the lenses during shipping and storage, they're easily lost and again, aren't really designed for field use. The Acton Black Bikini Covers are a low profile rubber lens covers similar to the covers used on the US SOCOM BNVD or PVS-31 Alpha, but compatible with PVS-14 and ANVIS style optics used on most commercial systems like the DTNVS, RNVG, and others. Hello everyone, I'm Eric. I'm Sam from TMVC. And we're here to talk about some differences between the DTMVG and the DTMVS, which is taking over the DTMVG program. That's correct. Uh, recently, the DTMVS debuted. Um, there was a whole lot of, you know, um, you know, hype and, and pizzazz uh, with the release of this new system. Um, the DTMVS is, in our opinion, the best dual tube system on the market in terms of price, features, durability, modularity, buildability, and serviceability, um, you know, currently in the market, like we said. So um, today we're going to talk a little bit about the DTMVG that the DTMVS re replaces and some of the features of the actual NVS system itself. So, All right, first we'll talk about the DTMVG. Uh, the DTMVG has been out for several years now. Again, it's manufactured, the housing is manufactured by Acton Black. We assemble the units here in house and we sold them for many years. We've sold thousands and thousands of units and they've um, proven to be a good goggle. Um, it's about 19 ounces. It's a fully articulating system. Um, in the stowed position, you can get it back pretty much all the way flush to the helmet. So stowability is good. Um, but recently, Acton Black, as most companies do, 
as further the development of uh, the technology and their systems. And they've come out with the DTMBS, which has a bunch of cool uh, differences uh, that they wanted to offer to the market to continue um, leading an innovation. And Sam is going to go over some of those. Yep. So the DTMVS came out, and it was innovative. Um, it took all the great features that the NVG um, incorporated into it, and then added on to it. So um, if you like the features of the DTMVG, the DTMVS still has those features in addition to some some new cool features. Um, as we mentioned before, it's modular. Um, so therefore, you can, as the end user, add the interpupillary distance stops if you want to. They're a bolt-on attachment. They're sold separately. Um, you know, you can you can buy them and use them, or you can forego them. It's just um, totally user preference. Um, and if you buy them and you don't like them, you can take them off. So um, yeah. and again, let's talk about those real quick. The the interpupillary distance stops are probably something that was the most uh, asked about or requested item when the DTMEGs came out. Folks like to be able to have a reference point to return those uh, each side of that system in, in front of their eyes so they, they know the same exact stopping point each time, which is what the IPD does. So Acton Black, being a progressive company, listened and incorporated that capability without forcing you to have it in the system. So it's an upgrade if you'd like it. Right. Uh, moving on from there, uh, probably the biggest thing was uh, the weight savings. They shaved a little bit more than an ounce off of this system versus the NVG system and uh, the durability aspect of this system versus the NVG. Uh, they conducted the um, drop testing at double the SOCOM um, drop test height. So right around two meters um, is what the, the housing basically went through for, for drop testing and passed. Right. So, uh, as far as an articulating goggle, this is the, right now, this is the, um, the cat's ass as far as durability and modularity. Right. Um, so uh, it is going to be battery pack compatible if, if you're one of those folks. So um, with the, the onboard CR123 battery, you're gonna get uh, 25 to 30 hours of battery life depending on temperature. Um, but if you wanna go to uh, the JAG Consulting um, DIC, which, which you'll use the, the second coming, um, it'll, it'll up it to about double that. So, right. um, but you know, s some of the standard features, it has a, you know, a dovetail shoe, so it interfaces with Nerodos and, and Wilcox dovetail mounts. Um, uh, the interpupillary stops don't interfere with uh, mounting accessories and stuff like that. So if you've got, you know, a PAS-29 Cody, or you're running any of the other lens assembly accessories, um, Tarsier Eclipses, or, um, focus the hoplite yep. um, refocusing rings. Mm -hmm. This the system will absolutely um, interface with them, as well as uh, the ops core snap shields. Um, if you've if you've seen the video on how to uh, life hack those, you can actually put them on these lens assemblies, and uh, they will um, interface with your standard uh, PVS 14 optics. So you have your um, diopter adjustment. Yep. So one of the coolest and most standout upgrades with the DTMVS over the NVGs is uh, the ability to attach a lanyard. Now, that's not saying the NVGs didn't have that all along. They did. Uh, there were slots, pass-through slots on the housing, but they weren't as apparent as they probably uh, should or could have been because we fielded a ton of phone calls about how to actually hook up a lanyard. But if you'll see on the NVS system, those are quite apparent, they're there, so there's no more searching around or having to make a phone call to see where to lanyard up your system at. Um, so again, they've always been on the DTMVG, just not as apparent as the NVS. And in my opinion, I think the DTMVS, at the very least, is a bit more aesthetically pleasing than the DTMVGs. No. Um, if you have a DTMVG, it doesn't mean you need to run out and all of a sudden replace your housing. Uh, because the NVG still is a great housing, um, has a lot to offer. Uh, but if you are, you know, new to the articulating binocular scene and in, in, in going through the purchasing uh, phase of that acquisition, uh, the NVS is definitely worth checking out. So, you know, this is great. This is better. But that's the uh, that's the Act Black DT NVS. Um, just a quick rundown of that, and obviously it's available at TNVC.com. And uh, Eric and I are both here to answer further questions if you have them.
Eric and I are going to talk to you now about choosing the right night vision system for you. So obviously the main component that's the heart of the night vision system is going to be the image intensifier tube. So we'll talk a little bit about tubes. We'll talk a little bit about the different grades and different types of tubes that you can get. Uh, and then we'll start talking about monoculars versus binoculars and should you decide to go that direction, panoramic goggles. Uh, and then we'll just briefly touch on some of the differences between the different housings. Pretty simple. It's what night vision device should I buy? Um, and based on that question and that question alone, I typically go over a couple different things about the systems, the criteria, and maybe what they need it for. Um, there's single tube systems, dual tube systems, there's thermal technology, and then there's uh, the panoramic systems. Um, and then within that, you have another category where you can do fusion like the ECODES on top of those. It all depends on what they want, but they all kind of serve the same role. They're going to help you see or fight better in the dark, whether that's people or animals or just looking at stars. Uh, but the, the, the main thing is, is uh, choosing the right tube, maybe, and then also with that, taking that knowledge and then rolling it into a system. So there's only two United States manufacturers of Gen 3 technology. Um, those are made by either Elbit Systems or L3 Harris. So, and Elbit Systems of America, uh, you know, it used to be uh, ITT, which a lot of people have heard of. Yeah. Um, they were then bought out by Harris, right. uh, which then ended up merging with L3 Technologies. So L3 Harris, so they became L3 Harris, but they actually sold off their night vision division to uh, Elbit Systems of America. Yep. So the company now that's known as L3 Harris uh, started out as Litton, they became Northrop Grumman, they were L3 Technologies, Insight Technologies. So those are your two main US DOD contractors that manufacture Gen 3 yeah. uh, image intensifier tubes. Now, another brand that's become relatively popular recently on the US market is uh, Photonis. Mm -hmm. Now those aren't technically Gen, 2 tube, Gen 3 tubes, they're actually Gen 2 tubes, mm -hmm. uh, or at least their technological architecture is. Um, Photonis is a French company, uh, or at least French based, but they have been able to develop that Gen 2 technology to the point where, in some circumstances, the Photonis tubes will approach Gen 3 in quality. Uh, but, you know, when you start getting to extreme low light conditions, you're still going to see a, a drop off in performance with the uh, Photonis tubes much more quickly than you see with modern Gen 3 tubes. Right. So, the easiest way to explain that, and typically what I roll into with a customer, is Photonis makes the highest spec Gen 2 system that you can get without it being Gen 3. It's just at the threshold and will give some performance of Gen 3. However, in really low light environments, the Gen 3 uh, intensifier tubes really just take the cake and that's because they can amplify more light. That's the way the technology works. So once you've decided, you know, whether to go with, with a Gen 2 Plus system or whether to go with a Gen 3 system, you, you know, there's a lot of different types of tubes. There's a lot of different grades of tubes. And, you know, really, ultimately, uh, any of the tubes that we're going to put in any of the TNVC or NGI systems uh, are going to be a high-quality image intensifier tube. Absolutely. So what system should you buy? Well, the first thing I ask is, do you have any budgetary constraints? If you do, I'll automatically recommend you to a PVS-14. This is our uh, entry level, but not in terms of because it's less quality. It's just the most affordable. It's a single tube system. It's called a PVS-14. We sell these in a myriad of different tubes, but essentially you can get these with either uh, thin film green or white or unfilmed white phosphor uh, intensifier tubes. It does what it does. It's a monocular system, so this can go over one eye helmet mounted. You can uh, Put a lanyard on this thing, throw it around your neck for when you're trying to get to your, let's say, hunting stand or even um, spotting things. Or you can put this in a backpack while you're out hiking, maybe if you don't make base camp before nightfall and you still need a way to find uh, how to get around. Um, it is extremely versatile. Uh, I've heard it referred to as the Glock 19 of the night vision world. 
but it does have limitations. Its biggest limitation is that it is uh, a single tube system. You have two eyes for a reason. Um, single tube systems, you're only feeding off of one input, only one eye. The other eye is unaided, meaning it could be staring in the dark or it could be staring at um, uh, street lights or it could be staring at uh, a full moon. Just depending on what the environment is at that time, it does have limitations. However, the pros are it's affordable, it's small, you can stuff it really anywhere, a pocket, uh, it's lightweight, and it's, uh, and it's good for just about anything. And then the next thing is dual tube systems. Dual tube systems are going to be more expensive because of the technology and they use two intensifier tubes with a power bridge, whether it's an articulating or a fixed. So obviously you have an increase in cost. So articulating versus fixed. This is the RMBG. It's a fixed bridge system. The only ocular adjustments that you'll have are going to be your, your objective and your ocular diopters. And on a transverse plane, meaning on this fixed bridge side to side, basically the distance between your eyes. So if you have eyes that are wider apart or closer together, you can kind of narrow these in or widen them apart. Um, there's some merit there. Uh, they are strong. They're really rugged. They don't have an articulating point, which some people would say or refer to as is a weak point in systems. We'll get, we'll get into that later. Uh, this particular system runs off of a CR123, whereas your PBS14 runs off of a double A. You also have a connector for an external battery pack, should you want to hook it up that way. However, you can also run from the battery on board the system. Articulating versus fixed, this is the articulating system. So no, no ability to articulate it, this is a fixed bridge system. It is what it is, it stays in front of your eyes when over there. When it's not, flip it up in the stowed position. Articulating systems. This is a PVS31. We also sell uh, the DTMBS, uh, which is comparable. Um, but articulating system meaning they fully articulate with each eye here. So you can fold these all the way back for a low stud position when they're flipped up over the helmet on the mount, or you can keep them sort of flat in front of your face still with the, the mount into the fixed position. But they give you the ability to either swivel one up out of the eye or both, depending. Uh, these 31s, they have interpupillary stops, which means that you can set the stop focus on uh, once you get these in front of your eye and cater to, you can uh, adjust these switches. That way, each time you independently rotate these out, you can push them back into the same spot each and every time. That way, you don't have to do any finite adjustments. Now, the PBS 31s, they feature a fixed ocular um, lens. They do have snap-in differences for the diopters. Uh, but they are uh, adjustable on your objective side. So articulating systems are going to be more expensive just out of the nature of the technology. You have to have a way for these wires to be unimpeded while you have uh, an articulating system versus this. But what I typically say is, do you find yourself in a role where you need to go hands-on, you're climbing things, you're in and out of things? People tend to favor articulating systems. If you're looking for something that's just keep it simple stupid, and you want just a rugged system, go with a fixed bridge system like an RMVG. If you just need the ability to see in the dark and you don't need to use this for extended periods of time or just an enthusiast, go with a 14. A lot of times people will want to know, it's like, well, for example, a unfilmed white phosphor PBS 14 is within striking distance of one of our more affordable um, XLS commercial spec uh, binocular systems. So do you go with a slightly lower grade monocular system or a higher performing monocular system? Um, and to that, you know, really I would say there's not an objective definitive answer, but if you're doing more dynamic types of activities, more running and gunning, uh, more kinetic uh, activities, if you're gonna be at the razor's edge of performance, I would recommend a binocular system, even if it's going to be of slightly lesser tube performance over a monocular system. At the same time, if you're a hunter uh, that, that, you know, and, and you're moving out to your stand or your halide site, and, and that's what you're using your night vision goggles for, and then you're using it to, to kind of observe uh, for, for animals, then, you know, a monocular system with an extremely high performing tube might be the better bang for your buck than a binocular system because you're going to want to squeeze every ounce of optical performance 
out of that single image intensifier based on what you're doing. Yeah, totally. Great points, great points. But again, we bounce back to budgetary constraint or what exactly you, you are most likely to do with that system. And that pretty easily will determine or help us help you determine what system you should buy. Allow myself to introduce myself. I'm Sam from TNVC and the internet. I am Augie from TNVC, also of the internet. And today we have a special announcement. So one of the products that we are most excited about being able to, to release this year is probably one of the products that we get the most requests for uh, of any other night vision system. And that is the L3 Harris BNVD, Binocular Night Vision System, or as it's more commonly known, the PVS-31 or the PVS-31 Alpha. Um, these are another one of those products that has previously been restricted to government sales, not necessarily because of anything to do with the technology or capabilities. It's a unfilmed white phosphor night vision binocular, uh, but really more than anything, just because of the huge demand from, from government customers, uh, there just haven't been enough of them to go around. Um, this is one of the products that we have worked uh, a lot with L3 Harris and worked directly with L3 Harris to have these be commercially released. And we're proud to finally be able to announce that they are, uh, that they are now available. Um, and make sure to check your email for a special V-Shot introductory price. So Sam, you want to tell us a little bit about these BNVDs that everybody wants so badly? Sure, why not? Listen folks, if you think you're excited about these, you should fill these fucking nipples. Anyways, the PVS-31, it was basically... Uh, it was it was it was came about to replace the PVS 15. It is a stripped down lightweight dual tube goggle system, uh, and it, it accomplished a lot of things by by um, you know new new technology and everything like that. It is very very lightweight. It is sub 16 ounces. Um, it has a, a you know uh, a lot of accessories that are built around it and interface with it. Um, it does use very good intensifier tubes. These tubes are. You know, uh, they're going to be minimum 2376 uh, FOM SOCOM spec tubes. They're going to come with data sheets. Um, the lenses are proprietary, but they are very, very high quality optics. Um, one of the cool features about these is a sacrificial uh, uh, Lexan, um, I guess you could call it, uh, protective lens that is built into the front lenses. So if you're doing a lot of force on force stuff, um, this lens is actually actually a protective lens meant to actually protect the recessed um, lens assembly. Um, outside of that, uh, it was the first dual tube articulating goggle system to have a, a Limo port standard on it for use with a battery pack. While you can use an onboard battery, uh, the battery pack offers a significantly improved um, battery life. You know, something something like 60 hours versus about eight with the onboard battery. Um, but that's the PVS 31, um, and these will be these will be available to the consumer market. So, all right, again, some technical difficulties. We apologize for that. Uh, we, are, we, we, we are working through some stuff. This is our first ever V-Shot, believe it or not. We're being shut up, man. We got the dossier to prove it. <laughs> <laughs> so, today for our live panel discussion, uh, we're going to be talking about uh, different ways to set up your helmet. 
and kind of rather than um, you, you know rather than just telling you how to do it, uh, we've got some special guests with us today. Uh, Chris Sizelove is the director of training for Blue Force Gear right down the road here in Pooler, Georgia, uh, as well as John Dufresne from Kinetic Consulting, uh, both great friends of the company. Uh, so we're all going to kind of talk about how our individual helmets are set up. I think that you'll find that a lot of them have a lot of similarities, but a lot of them are also going to have a lot of differences uh, that might help inform you uh, about how you should set your helmet up for whatever job it is in particular that you're trying to do, whether that is hunting or weaponized geometry, um, any of these things. Before we go into some of the modern helmets, uh, just a, a fun little thing uh, I wanted to, to talk to you, talk about is uh, this little guy right here. So this is kind of the the, the beginning of modern night vision helmet setups uh, as we know it, uh, and and kind of the the uh, the the origin of all of these other helmet setups that we've got. And this is really just a commercial Protec skateboard helmet. Uh, Protec has been making these for decades. Uh, with a pair of um, AVS-6 Anvis aviation goggles that have been adapted to the Protec helmet by drilling the, uh, the aviation mount into the, uh, it, it directly into the helmet. So a lot of y'all have probably seen helmets like this before uh, in a little movie uh, from, from about 20 years back called Black Hawk Down. That's really where kind of the, the modern tactical helmet uh, begins. So... Uh, Chris, would you like to start? Yeah, sure. Uh, let's see. From, I guess, front to back would probably be the best place to start. Uh, That's how I always do Yeah, it. I know, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, then I go back to the front. But... <laughs> Final sweep. Uh, 31 Alphas uh, with a, I guess we'd call this a legacy Cody now, since there's, there's yeah, the Cody out. Is. Yeah. Um, same setup I ran uh, at the end of my career when I was operational, so I run them because I'm comfortable with them and, and I love them. They've done me well over the past couple of years. Uh, Off-score fast helmet, again, pretty much the same helmet I ran when I was active duty. Loved it. Vampire light in a s, &S precision mount. I like to be able to move it around. This is just for administrative use pretty much. And also I found like working in a team environment, especially as an element leader, like. I need to look at stuff all over the place and, and I don't need to be pointing my gun at it because there's people in front of me, there's people around me. So I kind of, I like that admin, I, I won't call it an admin light, but a search IR light where it's like, hey, I can look over there without potentially flagging anybody or whatever. So this thing's pretty, pretty important. Um, visible IFF, IR IFF that's attached, uh, integrated into the 31 Alpha battery pack um, just to cut down on some form factor. Um, probably the only interesting thing I did for a long time, I still do it. I wish I knew who made these things, but these, uh, these aviation finger lights, uh, no idea who makes them. I've been just tying them to my boom mic for years. And, and hmm. I, I grabbed about seriously, probably two dozen of these things once out of, out of a supply locker. Cause I knew they were kind of hard to find <laughs> and I'm still running them. Uh, so you and, permission, though. Yeah. Tactically acquired. yeah, yeah. I mean, they're durable or <laughs> expendable item, you know, but as opposed to all the other lights and stuff with wires that you can put up here just for purely like I'm messing something in my hands a manifest or whatever uh running these little these little finger lights tied onto your boom mic just has done huge dividends for me so i oh, guess God. in a nutshell man that, that's about it yeah that's cool that's a good helmet dude yeah. oh yeah i dig this thing that's you know, no, no reason to ever really take it off. It's so comfortable. And that is that, that, yeah. that is the the Opscore Fast SF yep. uh, ballistic helmet, uh, the US SOCOM uh, FTHS. Opscore, of course, one of our sponsors. <laughs> yep. And I just started playing with this. Uh, what is this thing called? Step Advisor. Step, Step Advisor. Advisor. Yeah, I just started playing with this a couple of weeks ago, and like, I really, I really dig it. It's comfortable. I, I when I first looked at these, I was like, mm, I don't know, but. They fit my face. They fit the helmet. They're 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 pretty trick. Yeah. Cool. That's it. And we'll be giving one away tonight. Yeah. Not that one though. That one's probably really <laughs> fucking dirty. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's it. And I would like to say that my Cody is tied down in case I fall out of a watercraft. Tied down like correctly. That. <laughs> yeah. More, correctly yeah, tied more, down. More accurately in case I dump myself out of a watercraft <laughs> instead of somebody else, but. <laughs> <laughs> Got to put that disclaimer out there. <laughs> All right, cool. So uh, going to my helmet, um, 
I'm using an OpsCore SF here. Uh, I use multiple different types of helmets. I, I have a couple Team Wendy's too. Uh, I like trying different things, so it, it's always useful. Yeah, you do. Um, yeah, I do. <laughs> um, with that, I'm using my DTNVSs. These are still the prototype housing that I was testing out for Acton Black for or since April. Uh, you guys have probably seen it on, on like uh, pretty much everything I have. Uh, then a little different, I also use a Vampire Light on my helmet. Uh, I use it on a prototype mount that, that I've been uh, messing with uh, with one of my buddies who makes it. And I use a 300V on there, a Surefire 300V, so that I can, if I needed to, swap it out with my handgun light if I was just doing handgun stuff and I needed some more IR illumination that way. Uh, so that's what I use that for. Uh, Opscore amps, because, like... Uh, I haven't found any other ear pro that kind of keeps up with them, and those arms are freaking awesome. Uh, TMVC Mohawk, keep my batteries in a counterweight, which is always useful. Some IFF, and then uh, and then on the other side, I usually have uh, Mohawk camera for like filming stuff for fun, and you know for the gram and stuff. Uh, I also have a small task light on here, and uh, and then most of all, which all of you already saw, Augie drop night vision. Uh, I use my nerd lanyard, right? My night vision elastic retention device, uh, which you can find on Kinetic Consulting Doc Net, and uh, and that's uh that's pretty much my helmet. Why, why come your DTNVS ain't black? Oh, because they wrapped up, girl. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, the DTNVS wraps um, uh, that that came out recently. I think he's got them in what multicam in green right now or something like that. So they're they're pretty dang cool. So coyote multicam air multicam tropic ma one woodland. What else am I missing? Multicam black. If you mm -hmm. want your goggles to just look dirty. <laughs> air <laughs> that's sweat stained black. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yep. So I'm gonna follow that same trend. I have everything mounted to an Obscore Fast SF ballistic helmet. This is the best helmet in the game, hands down. If anyone says different, they're lying to you. Um, I have DTNVGs, um, Wilcox G24. Lanyard is the Kinetic Consulting uh, Nerd. I've got a Unity Tactical Spark, just as a spare IFF, in case I need to slap it or throw it down on the ground to mark something. Um, step in visor by Opscore, but I keep the seals on mine. Just because I'm, uh, you know, I want to be a little bit different, but also have a full seal. Um, let's see what else I have. Oh, Princeton Tech uh, Charge uh, Nav Light, or just a little personal index light. It's uh, I think what 20 lumen max on this thing for vis light, but it also has an IR function as well. Um, Core Survival Hellstar for IFF. I think uh, I like these the most out of everything I've tried so far just because they're very intuitive and easy to manipulate um, at nighttime, even with gloves on. Opscore amps with the rack connectors, because again, like everyone else said, these are the best ear pro that I could find. They really uh, do everything I need them to do. And plus with the NFMI inserts, uh, they're butter. It's just, it's just amazing. Forgot about that. And then um, of course, TMBC Mohawk. This one is in Tropic, but we offer them in all the different colors uh, and flavors. And I like to keep mine pretty well counterweighted um, and also batteries in the pull-out tray because typically when I wear my helmet, I'll cinch down the uh, octile and I don't buckle my chin strap just because um, I'm, you know, I don't like rules. You're a cowboy. Like yeah. That. You I don't like rules and no crazy. one tells me what to do. <laughs> John I do what I want. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think that's it. Yeah, so uh, following the trend, uh, Opscore Fast Ballistic Helmet. Um, you know, my helmets for, I use mine for instructional purposes primarily. So, um, when I'm teaching, I primarily teach with a PVS 14 and I do that for a couple of reasons. A, it's the goggle I have, but B, when I'm working with the other instructors like Eric and Chip and, uh, and stuff, it, it kind of is a confidence booster for students to show up with, with a PVS 14 and they're not intimidated by everybody rocking, uh, the binocular. So. I, I do run in a G24 mount, so if I need to go to a binocular, I can. 
Uh, on the right side helmet, I have an old uh, Legacy M1 uh, IR Illuminator. Great Illuminator. Great Illuminator, if you can find them. <laughs> they're, yeah. they're, they're hard to find. To and uh, it'd be awesome if, if they came back out with them. Yeah. Hint, ten, hint. Ten. Okay. Um, <laughs> um, and on the left side, visible um, uh, task light. On the back, just a, uh, a disposable marker light with some uh, old uh, luminescent and coal tape on the back. So pretty simple setup. And again, it's to kind of complement what the other instructors are wearing and, uh, and, and to show students that you can have a PBS-14 and be completely capable. Yeah, in entire wars were fought in one with PBS-14s. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and now the beard. So my helmet's going to be different than anybody's you see here for the main reason that it's a fast bump helmet. It's not ballistic. I'm hunting and I don't need ballistic helmet. If I need a ballistic helmet, I need to choose better hunting partners that are safer with a gun. So you can save yourself a bunch of money by getting a non-ballistic helmet. If you're just out goofing off in the woods at night or hunting things, um, if you want something to throw in a gear bag as a, a prep or whatever, not a bad idea to get a, a helmet like this. I run a, uh, um, I run a DTMVG. Um, I wish it were DTMVS, but when you're the mechanic, your vehicle's the last to get fixed. So I don't have the nice <laughs> new stuff. I'm running the old stuff, but I like this for the simple fact that I also run uh, thermal on my gun. And uh, when I'm calling coyotes, for example, I'll walk into a stand under nods, but then I may flip one up to go on the gun. So I like to have the, the ability to flip one nod out of the way. Uh, in case I need to creep into my thermal and check things out. Um, I'm also running a, uh, a discontinued IR light and it works great so why change it? Uh, on this side I have a Princeton Tech uh, task light. It's got white and IR light. I use that more than probably any other thing on the helmet. I'm using that all the time. Um, in the back here I'm running the, uh, the Mark II uh, Mohawk, it's got a battery tray in it for my uh, CR123s uh, that, you know, uh, night vision thermal eat those like Pez candy, so you got to have a bunch of them on hand. Uh, Unity Spark, I don't really uh, necessarily need that, but it's nice to have if you've got other buddies that have knobs. And 4D liner inside. Uh, these yeah, are the way to go. Worth it. Yeah, 4D it. tactical liner. It's going to keep your head um, not only warm but comfortable all night long. Yeah. Some of these are like putting your head in a vice, and the longer you wear them, the the more they hurt. If you get a good comfortable liner in there, that won't be an issue. I also like a worm dial because, like Eric, I don't wear a chin strap. This doesn't look good all tucked up here. So, what are you talking about? It but looks great. You don't need a chin strap if you're hunting, in my opinion. Yeah. That's how. That's why I set mine up the way I do. Depends on what you're hunting. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Bottom bears. So uh, y'all have probably seen uh, a little bit of a trend going on uh, with, with, with our NVGs um, and with our helmets. Uh, I am also using the OpsCore Fast SF. OpsCore is, is one of our great sponsors, uh, as well as these uh, Dazzle lenses in my, uh, um, in my Step In Visor, which is another new product. Uh, coming out from Ops Corps. And there are some advantages to being the director of operations for TNVC. Uh, so I'm running these GPNVG 18 panoramic goggles, um, which, you know, allow you greatly expanded field of view uh, and, and, and situational awareness. And then I've also got the Optics One e Cody uh, attached to it. Um, and then I also have the capability to add the OpsCore Soder, which uh, you, you heard a little bit about um, from, from OpsCore themselves. Uh, like I said, you're probably seeing a, a little bit of a trend here, very similar to a lot of, to, to a lot of uh, my, my, my uh, compatriots' helmets here. Um, I will say we did not coordinate what our helmets were going to look like at all. We gave no guidance about sticking with, you know, sticking with any particular way. There, there was, was one thing. Memo. There was one thing. I told John not to bring his Team Wendy helmets. Uh, <laughs> but other than that, I, you know, we did not tell anybody to set their helmet up in any particular way um, for this because we wanted this to be as natural and organic as possible and talk about the way that we actually run uh, our helmets. Um, 
like Chris, uh, I also have the SNS Precision um, Max mount uh, with the uh, Surefire. I prefer the V1 uh, in this application. It's Vampire, so it's got a low and a high uh, setting for both the IR and the white light. Uh, but it's again on the swivel mount. I like to have mine on the left side so that if I'm holding a weapon, I can activate that, that search light with my support hand, with my left hand. Um, and then I also have the Princeton Tech MPLS switch, uh, which is kind of my admin task light. And this one is just in white and red. So kind of like the boom mic thing, but I might be trying that out uh, in the future here. Um, I don't keep comms attached to my helmet. Uh, that kind of just comes from my background um, in the military. Uh, Fast SF is definitely probably the most comfortable helmet I have ever worn. However, if I do not have to be wearing a helmet, uh, that I'm not going to be wearing a helmet, uh, but there are a lot of times that I don't need to have my helmet on, but I need to still have my comms. So I also use OpsCore amps, but I keep them in the headband setting. Uh, it's a little bit less comfortable when you are wearing the helmet to have the headband under there, but the benefit of being able to take, just take off your helmet whenever you want um, and still have access to your comms, still have access to your hearing protection when you don't need to be your helmet is kind of the reason that, that I roll that way. But I, you know, again, by virtue of my experience, there was always somebody calling me on the radio or something. So I always needed to have those comms when, even when I was in a situation that I could take off my helmet. Yeah. So <clears throat> OpsCore, because they're the best helmets uh, that you can get, also OpsCore accessories, uh, because again, we do this shit a lot and we know what's good. We're fortunate enough to be able to have the hands on time with a lot of different things. But most importantly, shout out to Rafe and the people at OpsCore for making amazing mm. stuff, being sponsors, and also being really, really good um, friends with us. And we appreciate that, truly, we do. And speaking of friends, so for VShot registrants, uh, there is a coupon code from OpsCore tonight. That email should have already gone out. So you should have all of your promotional links as well as today's coupon code. Uh, with that, let's uh, roll into some giveaways. Our first giveaway is going to be an OpsCore giveaway package. It's going to be an OpsCore step-in visor with both the clean and tinted lenses. The MBS shroud uh, that's attached standard to all of the Fast SF helmets, um, but, but can also be added to any helmet with a three-hole Warcom pattern. Uh, shroud. Uh, the MBS is a great shroud. It's got uh, it's got bungees built in for both retention and to maintain stability, uh, as well as an OpsCore counterweight kit, um, and then of course a Safari Land 36 inch uh, dual rifle case uh, from another one of our sponsors. All right, twenty one ninety nine. And uh, while we're searching for who the winner of that is, let's go to a couple questions. External battery for the DTNVS. So that is coming from uh, the so the DIC uh, was for the DTNVG, the DTNVG integrated cable connector. Uh, there is um, a version of that called the Second Coming, uh, which incidentally exactly. will be coming. <laughs> exactly what you think it is. <laughs> Available soon. Uh, let's see what else. What else? Low uh, recovery time. When would you recommend a soft case over a hard case or vice versa? Ooh, I got this one. Uh, yeah, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. So, <laughs> nice, nice lead. Here's that soft case. So, reason, reason to have a soft case, guys. One, you want a good one that's padded and stuff like that because you want to, you know, you want to protect all your good stuff and all the important things like your cookies. Mm. Very, very important that you protect Ooh, yeah. all your, don't touch my cookies. <laughs> and, <laughs> and not only that, but if you get a two-tiered one like this one, you can go ahead and put in your DTMVGs or your DTMVSs on top, zip them up, still have cookies, and you're good. Now, a hard case, uh, I just be careful on a hard case because when you are outside in the moisture and it'll, then it'll you breathe. yeah, it'll and breathe. you lock your night vision into a hard case, the moisture's not going to get out. And then next thing you know, you've got rusty little pieces or you have bad battery connections because now moisture got in there yeah. pretty bad you got things swamp, like that swamp nods yeah swamp you nods yeah. yeah you don't want that, that so you don't want the monkey butt of <laughs> night vision it'll mess your stuff up all right so the winner of giveaway one is gregorio c gregorio you'll be getting an email you said it wrong very it's shortly <laughs> gregorio gregorio <laughs> <laughs> yeah all right uh let's see read off the 
So our giveaway package number two is going to be one of these lovely cookie pouches, uh, as, uh, as well as the NVG cleaning kit uh, that we went over tonight, as well as the Nicorium NVG wrap of your choice, and TNVC Mohawk of your choice, as well as a Safari Land uh, gift card for $250, uh, good for a holster, um, and an enhanced three-gun three bag in gray. Three five three seven. All right. Cookies are not Some more. No, no cookies. <laughs> no cookies included. No cookies, but I'll throw in a use something or whatever in there. <laughs> well, who am I kidding? I don't use those. Uh, let's see. Da, 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 da. Where does Augie get his flannels? Uh, Walmart. I'll Maybe, you'd have one. to ask my Goodwill, wife. Goodwill, I think. Yeah. The Goodwill. Costco, I think a lot of them come from. <laughs> Those are Kirkland's. This one's a Let's see. E-code usable with the Tarsier Eclipse. No. No, it's not going to mount. Uh, the, the way that the, the Tarsier Eclipse mounts, it's a friction fit, and it just makes the diameter of... Uh, of your uh, lens too big for the eCody to work. It's a condom for the front of your lens. That's dialable. It's more like a graduation hat. <laughs> <laughs> it is almost like a graduation hat. Or a really weird camera iris. Or like, uh, what is it, the pipe that Mario gets in, goes down like doo, 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 doo. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right, the winner for giveaway pack two is Dan D. Dandy. <laughs> All right. Uh, it's we'll possible there's more than one Dandy watching. Uh, one of y'all will receive You're going to get an email, I, obviously. I, I, yeah. I, I'm sorry for, for the rest of you Dandies uh, that aren't the winners of the giveaway, but there's still plenty more chances. They're not going to be acting very Dandy. Mm -hmm. No, it's not Dandy at all. <laughs> Is a mall rated for a scar heavy? Yes. Yeah, I'm pretty Things sure. Are rated yeah. for scars? Yeah. <laughs> but who has a scar anymore? Yeah. That guy. <laughs> uh, who would win Indian leg wrestle match between Eric and Forgotten Guns? I don't even. Who is Forgotten Guns? I don't know. We forgot. Oh, I about think they're him. talking about Forgotten Weapons. Forgotten, forgotten weapons? weapons? Yeah, the the gun Jesus guy. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah no, nah, yeah. me. No, Eric all day. Eric. <laughs> yeah. Eric. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. Have you seen his calves? Yeah. You don't know. <laughs> you don't even know about this. I'll show you. I promise. All right. Uh, how do I enter the giveaway? Oh, that's easy. You go to tmbc.com slash vshot, V-S-H-O-T-T, -T, enter your email address, and that's it. You do it one time, you're good for the remainder of the time we're doing vshot. So giveaway package number three, uh, going to be very similar to giveaway package number two, uh, is going to be a TNVC cookie pouch, cleaning kit, Nicorium wrap of choice, Mohawk of choice, Safari Land $250 coupon, uh, and Safari Land enhanced three gun case in gray. Boom. One, two, two. Wow. Low, Low number. number. Mm. Wow. Low number. Woo. Truly they, is random. They, they came in with a high bid. <laughs> I'll just say that. <laughs> what cookies does Duffy right. have? Some, they're mine actually. He stole them. <laughs> and they're, I'm pissed. They're not his. Chocolate chip. And some sugar cookies with sprinkles. Sprinkles. Those are mine, though. Sprinkles. I'll get them back. <laughs> uh, let's see. Craziest thing you've seen under night vision? Well, probably your mom. I don't know. Uh, anybody got a good story? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if I can, can tell some of those stories. Yeah. I mean, you th you think of it. We've we've seen it. We know a thing or two because we've seen a thing or two. Yeah. Under nods. I saw, under one, of those, <laughs> I saw one of those like spotted leopard things in Afghanistan once under nods. That's pretty that's cool. Like, yeah, because like, those really things were rare cool. as fuck yeah. and like got to watch it. I, 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 I did, did yeah. not see that They're on the many LPOPs in yeah. Afghanistan. I saw a lot of other things that I wish I had not seen <laughs> under um, usually long range thermals. Pretty much um, dudes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah dude. Dude, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> dude, dude things. Uh, all right, so cool. We got a winner for giveaway pack three is Jeff B. Jeff B. You'll be getting an email. Um, so yeah, check your spam folder. <laughs> uh, let's see. Um, da -da -da -da. That was B as in Bravo, by the way. 
Bees and Bravo. All right. Um, let's see. I'm sifting through questions. A lot of these we answered uh, yesterday. So before uh, before we go on to that, we do have uh, more giveaways every night. We're only announcing about three or four of the, the big packages every night. Uh, but tonight we're also giving away uh, another, another two sets of the uh, cookie slash NVG pouch and cleaning kit, as well as, well as a Safariland 46-inch dual rifle case. Um, these Safariland cases, uh, I, I, I've got both the 36-inch and the 46-inch, um, and I use them all the time. Obviously, you know, in my capacity at, at TNVC, I'm traveling, traveling with, with weapons all of the time. If I don't need a hard side case and I just need a case to, to carry around, uh, you know, to carry to carry a couple of rifles around. These Safari Land cases, um, they're, they're they're really flexible. They've got a lot of compartments for for a lot of the gear that you for a lot of the gear that you might want to bring with you. Um, so they are they, they they are great cases. Uh, so we've got two of those in 46 inch um, that that we that we're also going to be giving away. Uh, that you'll receive an email uh, as well as another enhanced three gun case. And another black 36 inch rifle case, dual rifle case. Yep, cool. And I think. Okay, uh, let's do some more questions then. Let's do. Difference between Elbit and L3 thin film white phosphor. Um, I'll give you want to kind of run down on that one. <laughs> Elbit and. and L3, Elbit and L3 thin, thin film white phosphors. Yeah, I mean functionally where they're manufactured, uh, the thin film technology is is really potato tomato. Yeah, it's it's uh, <laughs> that they're, they're pretty much equivalent um, depending potato on yeah. depending on which one that you get. Uh, you, you know, they're they're both mil spec tubes. Uh, they both utilize the thin film technology. They're both excellent tubes. Um, L3 Harris, I would say, tends to be more consistent with their quality. Uh, well, not with their quality. They're all high quality, consistent with their specs. It's a narrower range. Elbit Systems tubes, I would say, have a wider range of specs. Again, that's not a, a quality statement. It's just a statement of the fact that, you know, Sometimes you will find you will find more tubes closer to the minimums with Elbit, but you will also find more tubes that, that you would consider super tubes that are, are way in excess of the minimum. But for, for all intents and purposes, thin film tubes is thin film tube, and, and if it's a mil spec tube, it's a mil spec tube. All right, so second part of that question, and we'll leave it to you, Augie, and everyone else. We can put our uh, whatever in our gear cubbies and grab some road sodas. But... Uh, Difference between thin filmed and unfilmed white phosphor. <laughs> Fifteen <laughs> seconds for that. So is this this is just <laughs> yeah, FAQ yeah. night. Um, so basically, the film when when you talk about the film, the film refers to uh, the ion barrier um, inside the image intensifier tube, which was designed to to protect the photocathode. Um, that film, uh, that ion barrier, does slightly degrade the image. So the thinner that you can make it, uh, the, the more photons that, that your photocathode is able to collect that results in a clearer, brighter, uh, crisper image. Um, so an unfilmed system obviously does not have, uh, does not have that ion barrier uh, or has a very, very, you know, minuscule ion barrier which essentially you know which essentially uh results in an improvement of performance um in your image intensifier tube uh there has been some there have been some rumors going around that there's some sort of uh durability uh downsides to unfilmed image intensifier tubes back when they were first developing un, uh, unfilmed image intensifiers or when itt referred to them as filmless tubes uh, they, they they did have a lot of trouble building um, a more durable tube without the ion barrier. L3 uh, now L3 Harris has, has cracked that code, um, and, and and so modern unfilmed image intensifier tubes are every bit as durable, every bit as long lived as thin film tubes. Correct. <laughs> Stop time. Keep the questions coming, guys. 
We're going to take a few more questions and then we're going to go on some other stuff too. It's not going to just be a question overhaul. This is our V-shot circle bar. <laughs> Make a mess. All right. Uh, if you have a PBS 14, should you run it on the dominant eye or weak side eye? That depends. Are you doing laser engagements or are you doing passive? If you're doing passive, Amy, like through the through the optic, go with obviously the eye that's behind the optic. If you're doing laser engagements, maybe go for the opposite eye uh, or. Just whatever one you feel more comfortable with. Uh, come take a class. Um, figure out what works best for you through trial and error. Uh, whose mom's basement are you filming in? <laughs> Actually, yours. Um, <laughs> uh, no, but seriously, this is probably the coolest basement you've ever seen. Uh, that's for sure. Especially since we're above ground. Yeah, it's the most expensive basement. That's that's also for sure. There's with all this shit here. This is actually Light Force USA is southeast basement. Yeah. Oh, you got snacks? <laughs> what the fuck is that? Shh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, pulling it out. Super uh, Right, more questions. Let's see. Uh, do they still sell PBR? Uh, apparently. Fuck yeah, yeah, they still sell yeah. PBR. <laughs> Wait, who doesn't like PBR? Yeah, check PBR. the check did, the didn't uh, micro check brew the, this shit up. Check the statement. We 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 sure as hell bought some. No. <laughs> <laughs> apparently, according to the can, they've been making PBR since 1844. Yeah. Um. <laughs> <laughs> anyone so running VE Myers? I assume you mean malls. Is anyone run malls? Yeah, of course. Um, yes. Oh, yeah. They're great, yeah. man. Uh, a few of us have different stuff. I got PEC 15s too, but yeah, absolutely. Mall is a fantastic laser. VE Myers is a longtime friend of TMEC's. Uh, Matt and the crew over there make a phenomenal product. Um, and the mall, in my opinion, is, uh, it, while it is pricey, it is the best at what it does by far. And I think it kind of surpasses the competition, not only in functionality, but ergonomics and just sheer design. That's my opinion, I don't know. If you guys don't agree, then we can fight about it in the parking lot. Well, and in terms of a class one laser, I mean, in, in terms of a class one IR aiming laser illuminator, I, you, you're just not gonna top it for, for performance. Uh, in the class one, if you are, you know, military or law enforcement have have access to, to restricted power units, uh, which again we would love to sell you. We that that is not a decision that we have made. Uh, that's regulated by the FDA. We will be talking more about IR lasers later this week. Uh, we would love to sell you class three B lasers, but we cannot. However, we can recommend you know what is probably hands down the best performing class one laser, which is the Mall, the BE Myers Mall C one plus. Yeah. Um, yeah, you're just not going to touch it in a class one system. I will piggyback on that. We would love to sell you class three lasers, like Augie said, but also we do a lot of behind the scenes stuff to try to make that stuff come to the market. Uh, case in point, the APLC, that was mine and another guy's program um, back in, what was that, 2015? Um, was earlier, wasn't it like 20, 2013? 20, started probably trying to get, didn't know, play ball. Yeah. in 2013 but i think it finally came to fruition in like 20 into 2014 i believe but i mean again i don't want to toot our horn here but Could the FPLC, a civilian legal pack 15 i mean <laughs> you're welcome uh that was us so um yes i understand it's underpowered but a lot of folks like the aesthetic they're used to it from the GWAT. uh they go with what they know but that was long before the uh mall came into play better than nothing yeah and the mall is using uh newer technology, Vexel technology, that just absolutely dominates right now. And it just kind of is what it is. But again, I mean, we'd love to sell you anything you want. But that, uh, There's a reason that all of the next-gen lasers are, are, are Vexel illuminators, and the Mall C1 Plus right now is the only, is the only one that's available in a Class 1 version. Yeah, uh, but, you know, who knows? With this administration, it might change. It might open up. It might get a little bit looser, you know? Who knows? 
that, that was the punchline. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody asked, uh, what liner does Tom run in his helmet? Now, I think I know what they're asking. Pads? Or are they talking about the actual Opscore liner? It's oh, a hot dial liner. liner. I don't have a liner. But he no. has the, uh, the 4D uh, tactical pads that we sell on the site. Um, they're a great cost-effective upgrade. They're really, they're really, really comfortable. But also, <clears throat> you know, do they? Do, how long do they hold up with all your hair product? <laughs> <laughs> they're actually very durable. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Mm -hmm. They don't get all gunked up, kicked no. up. <laughs> you couldn't take them out and throw them in the washing machine. Oh, I'd lick oh, them, bro. Shit. Yeah. Yeah. Damn. Aspiring seals. Uh, uh, it smells good. That's for sure. <laughs> Tom Austin is the best smelling dude I've ever smelled in my life. Uh, Thank yeah. you. And he smells a lot, I of smell dudes. a lot of dudes. <laughs> a lot of dudes. <laughs> I smell a lot of dudes, and I'm not. You know, it is what it is. It's 2021. I know. Don't get me on that train. Right? And you're not gay, but 20 bucks is 20 bucks. Yeah. Uh, advantages for e coding in a law enforcement setting. Easy. I, right off the top, just from my experience, detection, searching for people, and people are warm bodies. Yep. So easily finding them because they they're going to pop out and stand out um they're going <clears> to <throat> you can be in a wood line and, and and go five feet into the wood line without a, an illuminator you can stand still and be hidden theoretically uh, under nod uh with an e cody you're not going to hide from that um you are unless you're d just a dead body then you can probably hide from it <laughs> depending on how long you've been dead after long enough. yeah after long enough you know. but you emit heat so that's the obvious advantage scanning and detecting for and for people well truth be told if you're dead long enough you will start to emit heat again again yeah yeah but as, as we've learned from the predator movies if you just douse yourself in mud yeah in mud can't find you E. Cody useless. Unless your eyes are open. Yeah. <laughs> Close your eyes. Did they, did they change settings on the E. Cody? Is there still patrol, outline, and full yep. therm? Mm -hmm. There's not yep. like a fourth magical setting or nothing? There. Uh, there's nothing like flashy or jazzy. It's just... <laughs> It's those just, three uh, yeah, so, I mean, those three work. Right. I just didn't know if they cooked up some other thing, like, you know, no, just I mean, it's really just smaller and lighter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 looking for Predator. I can see his nipples. We'll get there. We'll get there. <laughs> I see through him. <laughs> Favorite sandwich? I'll go first. Uh, Jimmy John's Turkey Tom. I will fist fight somebody over a Turkey Tom sandwich. Mm. Jimmy John's the hunter. Uh, I mean, okay. I, I by far. Yeah, okay, I'll give you... You're Jimmy between John's them, dude. Right now, <laughs> you right 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 now. <laughs> I don't know who's talking know. about Jimmy John's. Jimmy Wawa, John's absolutely fire, Wawa. It, it, if you're for, from the Northeast, Wawa is, is the way to go. All of you guys are wrong. Wawa. Ice cream sandwich it's with two cookies. It's a gas station sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> Ice cream sandwich. I, I'm fat, so I like all sandwiches. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. I, I judge all restaurants by their the quality of their Reuben sandwiches. So it's always what I order when I go to a new place. I'm like, yeah. Reuben sandwich. Because if it's, if it's shit, then... The restaurant's probably is it is it yeah. really a Reuben if a guy named Reuben didn't make it for you? Uh, <laughs> it's Reubenish. Yeah. That's what it is. Yeah, I only which also with... looks like rubbish. So, <laughs> you know how that goes? Yeah. What about you, Bell? Uh, peanut butter and jelly. Oh okay. yeah. Take, take a classic. Classic. Yeah. Yeah. Fucking palate of a six yeah. year old. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I most of the food I eat is like the gummy bears and, and fucking hot pepper. Trail food. Yeah. 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 Like chicken fingers. Yeah, I only mess with Jimmy cheese. John. They got the best uh, meat and the best bread. I'm good with that, Will. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody said Firehouse. Who said Firehouse? Somebody said, said Firehouse. No. No. He said no. Wawa. Dude, Firehouse has got sweaty meat. I don't know what they did to the animals before they killed them. <laughs> <laughs> Tickled them for two. Y'all know what you did. Uh, <laughs> thoughts on the purse for Russian lasers? Uh, they're, 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 they're they're Russian. They're Russian. So, yeah. so I... So I like that they're they're freaking powerful, right? Mm -hmm. But the switchology is just crazy, right? The way you have to push them buttons, uh, the way you adjust the illuminator, you have to use a tool, which is kind of weird. <laughs> so uh, yeah, and then they use a proprietary switch. Yeah. So if you're trying to use like a tap switch or a dual surefire switch or whatever, you're not going to get it in there. You have to use a different kind. So you have to use a Russian one. Um, now they, I, I've heard they have like really good warranty. It just you have to ship it somewhere crazy with like Cyrillic on it. So oh, good luck. Yeah, get and, some on the phone. Yeah. Yeah, supposedly you can you can do it, but 
I'm not a fan personally. I won't waste my money on that. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people, a lot of people on the internet seem to have experience with their warranty service. So. Mm-hmm. I mean, they're clone correct, I guess. That's that's one thing. <laughs> hey, not four. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, what else we got? This is virtual circle bar, guys. So you, you don't have yeah, to. Yeah. You don't have to keep it just to night vision related questions. That's why. I'm yeah, here. we're also going to talk yeah, and tell some stories here? too. Because I heard it was a bar question. Yeah. That's why I'm uh, here. <laughs> <laughs> Who, who's this random guy we just yeah. picked? Just well, that, that's in? very circle bar ish, where it's like the crew, and then like there's a rando like hanging around. You're like, what's up, bro? Some, oh, some, like, I'm here to party. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Did he come from under your speaking arm? Speaking of rando, <laughs> speaking of rando, Kane, why don't you introduce yourself? Yeah. Hey guys, I'm Kane Tierney. I'm the new, um, I guess you could say, sales rep for TNVC. So you'll be seeing me a lot more if you haven't seen me already. Been in the industry for 26 years now, I think. Um, worked for some of the best companies in the industry. Still affiliated with them, but uh, been around and going to be around for a while. Kane, Kane's like a fart in a skillet. You're always just bouncing around everywhere. Right? I'm everywhere, man. <laughs> is, that, is, is, is that a Utah idiom? Yeah. <laughs> That's the first time I ever heard that one. Yeah, I haven't heard that I've never heard that I'm one. I'm not sure how that one works out. I don't know if that was a compliment. No, or... that's a good description okay. of you. Oh, okay. All right. All right. I've been, yes. called, I've been called a lot worse, if you know me, so. He's like, yeah, I like farts, and I do things with skillets. <laughs> So, okay. That's about right. Yeah. Yeah. Standard, All right. Standard Tuesday. Fart in a but, skillet. But yeah, that's why I'm here. So, hello everyone. Kane's a good dude. He's been around a long time. I've known him a long, long time. And we're ha- we're lucky to have him. He's a good guy. Thank you. Appreciate that. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Let's do another question here before we get too wild. Um... PBS 14 on one eye and a flare breach on the other eye. Is it intuitive? No. Oh, we were just talking about that this afternoon. Oh, I don't know who started this fucking rumor that it'll like somehow merge and the stars align and then you have fucking fusion systems. Yeah. No. Uh, that is one white trash P squared. Flip one down to use it, flip it up when you're not, and vice versa. And that's it. And, and don't, don't. Don't listen to stuff that people say on the internet uh, without vetting who is saying it. Um, Including this. Yeah. <laughs> and the only reason we know that is because we were drinking just like now and we tried that shit one time and it didn't work. No, but seriously, no, it won't work. It's not intuitive. It doesn't overlay itself. It's a great way to get a migraine. Yeah, absolutely. The few yeah. guys that say it work, like you ask them, all right, what did you actually have to do to get this to work? Well, and, they're cross eyed, I think. Well, they're they're going through like all sorts of contortions and stuff yeah. like that to try and get like like the settings absolutely perfect and and, and 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 you know and then even still they'll admit that it's it's not something that that they would use in a serious situation you know it's fine for like hunting or something like that I guess uh, but but it's 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 just really hard for your brain to process disparate images mm-hmm. like that. Are you saying hunting isn't a serious situation? It is. Ruh, bro. Yeah. Uh oh. Ruh, bro. You know there's animals out there that are gonna kill you. Listen, man, coyotes are fifty bucks a head, bro. Mm, That's true. a serious. And fucking hogs are game. taking over the south. We had the yep. whole conversation <laughs> yesterday about that. Yep. You thought immigration was bad. Uh, <laughs> Why are there no chicks to the sausage party? Did you just assume our genders? <laughs> Seriously? <laughs> Sorry, what? Uh, well, there are a lot of Again, ladies here. You just can't blood. see them. So you said you want to important yeah. things. They're actually working. They're working. <laughs> and we are drinking beer and shooting the shit. You said you want an authentic circle bar, so it's about normal. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> Let's see, scariest night vision moment. Let's start. This is a good one. Everybody probably has one of these, right? So I'm going to start over here um, with size love. Scariest night vision moment. If you can't think of something, just fucking lie. <laughs> <laughs> uh, doing an NVG like confidence course we had set up at Fort Benning. There was one run where you had to, you know, do the the classic like fucking eight inch log or some such shit. But the thing's like, I don't know, 20 plus feet above the ground. And they got pads down there, but you can't see them yeah. under nods, especially when you're cherry. You know what I mean? Oh, and nice. That, and yeah, that, that, that is a little unnerving, but I guess it's about it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm the new guy of the group. I can tell you um, Tito's and Night Vision doesn't mix very well. <laughs> and, um, I'm just telling you this, but um, 
missed a step coming out of a um, place down in South Florida and hit the deck kind of hard. And it was kind of like really embarrassing because I was with, with a lot of cool people and I'm not cool. So that was my. <laughs> I'm not cool, cool enough. That wasn't cool. I important, think you're cool. Important buddy. safety tip. Thank you. I, I think it's pretty cool to fall on your face. Uh, <laughs> <What's my> face? <laughs> <laughs> so. Um, Let's see, most unnerving, that, that was the question? It's a, the, you know, yeah. scariest. Scary moment? Whatever. Uh, well, Scary. overseas one time, uh, walking in on the mountains, right, of Afghanistan, walking right behind a couple dudes, uh, I saw one of my bros start to lift. And I was like, how is he growing under night vision? What it was, was I was falling. And I <laughs> ended up falling about, like, I think it was like 20 feet or so. Uh, down a, a little little ravine, the dude behind me fell with me and stuff, and uh, we ended up like kind of hanging out down there, catching our breath a little bit <laughs> before getting yeah, getting up and trying to get back up there with the the rest of the platoon. Got but, a little winded on the way down, huh? Yeah, yeah. You can say that. <laughs> oh, we fell. We totally fell down here. It was totally bad. No, bad stuffy. It was definitely scary. I, I've never seen somebody grow like <laughs> in my eyes. I'm like, that's weird. <laughs> was the ground falling <laughs> Augies. I think for me you know I mean I, I I've got you know some of the stories about about falling and and, and everything like that but I think that probably what was most unnerving to me uh, when I was a platoon leader in Afghanistan one of our sister platoons uh, had a PBS 14 stolen out of the truck um, and for me what was super unnerving I, on the one hand, I was super relieved that it wasn't one for my platoon because I didn't have to deal with all the paperwork. On the other hand, it was that realization that, that so much of the technology that we rely on uh, and we think, you know, that at the time we still were talking about we own the night uh, and, and realizing that that might not necessarily be the case because there's, you know, this one PVS-14 and obviously, you know, I was a young buck second lieutenant at the time. Um, but but I, I, I've come to learn a lot more about uh, questionable property accountability practices and, and, and very well know that, that it is not something that you can assume uh, that the night vision technology, night vision capabilities are, are something exclusive to us or, or some kind of immutable advantage that we have. And so I think that's probably one of my most unnerving moments and realizations when it comes to night vision. See, I thought he was going to say when he dropped those DTNVS. Really <laughs> 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 yeah. so right on Should have had a nerd on it. <laughs> Sorry, an email sent out about that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Rhymer uh, already emailed about it. <laughs> yeah. It's durability test. Yeah. It works. Uh, Sorry, Molly's table. So everybody's got a cool one about people. And sure, those are fun, but I I'll switch it up a little bit. Um, we were out in Texas, Victoria, in fact, and we decided to put a PEC-15 on a crossbow and stalk up to a sounder of hogs and, and, and shoot some. Well, we were pretty successful other than about, you know, we shot two, but that was another time it got pretty hairy. Um, essentially, when you stalk up on a bunch of pigs, people are predictable, right? They're going to react a certain way, but uh, not hogs, man. So we stocked up on the sounder of hogs, and I guess something spooked them. Who knows what it was? Probably maybe snow or something he did. like that. Maybe <laughs> us. <laughs> and about, so you know, probably 30 to 50 of them turn and run towards us. Uh, and at that point, it's just like, oh, shit, you know, find a place to go. There were some mesquite trees, so we were able to kind of dodge them. But, I mean, when you're under nods and it's pitch black and you've got a bunch of grunting, hairy animals running towards you, uh, that can get a little fucking weird. So. It's like a Friday night for yeah. me. I don't know why it's yeah. weird. It wasn't scary. It was fun. Looking back on it, it was pretty fun. But, I mean, you know, whatever. I switched it up. You yeah. guys have some stupid fucking yeah. Chippendales stories about is awkward, people. right? <laughs> yeah. uh, mine's actually, uh, it's, pretty, it's pretty spooky. And it, was, it happened while I was wearing MBGs. And uh, during the invasion, uh, I was up north. And... Uh, you know, we started clearing structures and, you know, these like one story mud structures, adobe structures, and we had hit a whole bunch of them. They're, they're pretty, uh, we didn't really run anybody. We started getting overconfident, started racing to the door. You want to be the first guy in the, in the structure and uh, got out of the truck, come around a corner and actually ran into an Iraqi soldier and uh, knocked me down, knocked him down, knocked my goggles <laughs> off, knocked my rifle out of my hands. His rifle goes flying. 
We're like kind of kicking at each other, and I mean, and and, uh, oh, it was there. Like the rifle was there. It was just out of my hands, and uh, and I literally got run over by like two of my teammates that were behind me from my gun truck. They they stepped on me and they took care, ran that guy over too, and got him away from me. And uh, but you guys guys didn't fight for the knife, like no, 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 there there was there was none of that. But uh, come on, come on, yeah, it was was a little. Pretty unexpected, so then that definitely slowed me down for uh, the rest of the night, you know. But um, yeah, you just get overconfident with the technology, get overconfident in the situation, and uh, you know the enemy gets a vote. So. Probably would have seen him if you were using duels. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is before duels were even around. Back when they issued you a horse. <laughs> 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 yeah, Antietam, it was rough, man. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Night Vision and horses aren't a bad deal, so. All right. By you, Tom. This one probably has some hairy little Mine's not uh, nearly as cool as that, but I love to mess with people. Uh, no. Don't have knots. Really? <laughs> and no, that's just. I have Light Force Rock 40s on the front of my Tacoma, and I love to turn on my IR lights and put my nods on in the dark and go really fast down dirt roads with people who don't have nods and it's <laughs> it's actually freaky shit but i wasn't paying attention one night and my battery died about 60 on a windy dirt road <laughs> we, we, we ended up jumping a ditch and going through at least one barbed wire fence maybe two before i could get the brakes on enough to get skidded to a stop and uh, all I could do was laugh. It was just, like, Dude in the car is like, what were you doing? He's like, I couldn't see. I don't know. <laughs> That's awesome. Fun stuff. Uh, so I think we're going to roll into Duffy talking about one of his rifles. And if we, if there, there may be a break in the feed. However, we're coming back. We'll throw you to a commercial break. Uh, but we do have to take a little bit of a break here. But uh, stay on the line with us. Make sure you're here if there's a break in feed. Because uh, we're going to be here. Doing what we're doing, having fun. So Duffy, go and grab your rifle, bud. Which one you guys want to talk about? Uh, Whichever one you want to talk about. Your little. No, your little pistol. Yeah. Yeah. The little pistol. Yeah. No, no, the the big pistol. All right. Yeah. I think it's pretty dope. Let's talk about this thing. It's only one. Because why not? All right, what's up, guys? Oh, he's got a gun. So, uh, so real quick, right? People are always asking about like rifle setups and stuff. This is one that uh, I set up for like more long distance or thank you, or or Sorry. mid mid to longer range stuff with a an AR, right? So if you're doing DMR or SPR based stuff, right, uh, you're looking at trying to stretch the 5.56 round a little further. And, uh, and not only that, but I like to do it in the dark too. So, uh, <laughs> phrasing. Uh, with that, right, so I have my, uh, my Battle Arms 16-inch uh, uh, workhorse here uh, with the Roscoe 16-inch barrel, which is a fucking really good barrel. Um, on the front end, I have a Thunder Beast can. Uh, I still haven't found a can that shoots like that tight of a group. And... When I take it off, still shoots pretty tight with very little shift, about a 0.1 uh, mil shift, if anything. And, uh, and then back on and it's back to it's zero. It's pretty sweet. Uh, I use Thunder Beast uh, bipods as well. I like how they work. And then my PVS 27 up in here is what I use for shooting in the dark. With that, I made it with a uh, maul on the top so that I can activate mall settings and actually see a little further out. Uh, depending on what I'm doing, I can, I can set it in different ways. Uh, mostly I just use it on that long range setting. So uh, another use for your mall if you have one uh, or if you're thinking about getting one. And then uh, on here I have a Leupold scope. I use a Mark V uh, on most of my rifles. This one's a Mark VI. I dig it. Uh, it's in a spur mount and that's what I use to hold my mall on there. And then uh, a little further back, last little thing about this rifle is the stock I use is an LMT, like SPR stock. I really like it. Um, uh, has adjustable length of pull and adjustable cheek riser. So pretty sweet, 
freaking setup if you're looking at doing stuff in the dark uh, for a little bit longer distance. I dig it, and uh, and that's how I kind of set up that longer rifle. So five five six. Mm -hmm. What bullet did you shoot? I'm shooting a uh, 77 grain Black Hills. So it's a uh, no uh, no cant indicator on your rifle that has oh, yeah. like driven you crazy. So I do have a cant indicator. Okay. Gotcha. It's gotcha. on the bottom of my mount. Ah, oh yeah. wow! Ooh. So it's integrated on the spur expensive. mounts. Yeah. Very yeah. nice. Spur means. Expensive. And then what kind of distances are you shooting? <laughs> so so with with this rifle, I've gotten out to 800, um, and that's pushing it, and that's on like a nice nice wind day versus a really windy day. That's just because of the caliber, though. That setup, you yeah. go away. I mean, absolutely. How far does that mall light up? So I've shot out to 520, five, 520. I will. It was in meters, so was that the ER? almost. No, I, I wish I had an ER. Not yet. Um, but uh, I don't. I don't Get need it for it, yet. bro. <laughs> say, I know where you can buy one. Get your money out. So yeah, girl. The the other thing is too. Like during the day, I can see pretty well under nods. I'm getting I'm getting around 520 meters with it, and I can shoot probably a little further, depending on on the amount of illumination out there. That's good. I dig it, man. I dig it, man. That rifle's really it's pretty nice. sweet. Tis fun. Tis fun to That's shoot. Pretty sweet, dude. Uh, let's see. You want to talk about your other one, your night fighting rifle, instead of your uh, long distance? Right? Yeah, sure. I'm a hater. I'm a, I'm a hater on it. His patch. I'll say it. Yeah. Well, it's actually tattooed. Yeah. Here. I'm a fan of uh, the battle lines rifles. So yeah, absolutely. So another one of the battle arms guns that I use is my workhorse 10.5, and as you can see, there's there's some similarities, right? But some differences at the same time. Uh, with this one, uh, it has a, a nice 10.5 uh, Roscoe barrel in it. Uh, I get sub MOA out of this 10.5 barrel, as well as their 16 inch, their 12 inch, and, uh, and I think I also have one of their 14.5s. So uh, their barrels are pretty freaking solid with, with good ammo. Uh, on this one, I still have my Surefire RC2. Uh, I also use a Maul and I use a Cloud uh, Rain on here. Pretty solid light. Uh, I like the fact that they come with a switch. They have good, you know, uh, actual cordage or, or wire main, or maining, maintaining your wires and stuff. Pretty good. It also has its own clicky tail cap that's separate. So if your switch breaks for whatever reason, you still have activation of your clicky tail cap. And they're really good dudes over there, man. Yeah. Sorry to interrupt, yeah. but they're no, those, those absolutely solid guys over there, man. Yeah. I, I like Matt and, and Sean. They're they're pretty freaking nice dudes, yeah. man. Um, the other thing, uh, I use rail scales for protecting my hands, even though I do wear a glove or gloves sometimes. Uh, rail scales, I have a really good relationship with them. Uh, I go ahead and I send them money, and then they send me rail scales. You too? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Nice. Oh, Pretty cool. That's how that works. Hey, Pretty cool, right? That's a great uh, That's an awesome relationship. <laughs> great relationship. And then uh, further down, I have my aim points, uh, the micro, and this is one of my oldest T1s. I think this one's been on three of my deployments with me. Really and it's still alive. Can't kill him. You can't no, kill him. You can't. And then it's on one of the Unity risers. And then I have my 3X magnifier, which I use every once in a while, not as much as I should. Uh, but at the same time, I don't really like magnifiers all that much. I rather an LPVO. Uh, but I also have one of those on a flip to center from Unity. And then, uh, and that's pretty much my good old knife fighting rifle. Cool. So my wife it. just texted me saying good night. Good night, babe. Love you. <laughs> <laughs> I love everything you're doing right now. You're welcome, boo boo. <laughs> he likes it because he has oh, too many PBRs. I have no negative no, comments. No, <laughs> no negative <laughs> comments. We're a little, we're a little jelly right now. <laughs> um, ten like, out of ten. What bone? Oh, well, can I touch it? Yeah, 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 yeah. Touch. So something that that I get questions on a lot, guys, and I'm sure maybe somebody will ask, is why I keep them on the same side instead of offsetting for for balance. Um, reason I like to keep them both on the same side is for consistency. So if I practice working around thresholds or, or any piece of cover and both my illumination devices are on the same side, then it's consistent with daytime or nighttime versus I have to lean out further for a different one. Um, some people like to put them on both sides, like the mall on the other side or the light on the other side, and I don't prefer to do that. I like that consistency. So yeah. All about training. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Mm -hmm. Love it, love it, love it. Uh, Fix yourselves. We had a question come in. Mm -hmm. Does e-coding matter on green or white? Um, 
No, 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 not at all. I think it does no, it the same thing. Uh, it's gonna, it's gonna project or overlay on either one of those just fine. Um, let's see. I think a better e Cody question is like monocular versus uh, binocular. Mm. Mm. I find with a with a monocular it tends to overwhelm the the night vision. Because there's only one. Because there, because your input is only the yeah. one tube. So I would say a, a second part of that question is is it excels under binoculars and it's fair yeah. under a monocular. I, so I, I use the e Cody extensively for about I guess what, four years overseas and con with it like there's a, we always talk about like how you should always be adjusting your gain if it's manual and focus and all that kind of stuff but like i play with my cody uh gain probably more so than i touch my nods because there's times where like i want it really high because i'm looking at a wood line or something like that or then once we go like interior i'm doing work like that i just reach up and shut it off or just take it all the way down to the max because you're right when that when that when that bitch is humming, it's a, it gets a little busy. And I always run yeah. my uh, Cody on outline. Pretty much yeah. never. I never really had it on patrol or full, full thermal. I was yeah. like, nah, outline's fine. It just gives gives you a little blip. Say, so, hmm, I need to look at that area a little bit harder. But yeah, yeah for for occasional static scanning, I'll mm -hmm. sometimes put it on patrol. But other than yeah. that, it's yeah, it's outline. pretty much all outline. Yeah. Um, it's really the best way, I think, to, to use it. Does like the e Cody have the same switchology? As it doesn't have the same flapper. It's, yeah. it's got buttons. Oh, really? Yeah. Mm. yeah. Okay. <laughs> I, mean, it doesn't I like have that flapper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did. Out, you know, it was, it, it, it's the it one thing that I w it, it's it's the one thing that I wish they they had kept from from the legacy Cody yeah. uh, into the e Cody. The e -Cody. so so like that little flapper. I mean, it. it just takes no time to learn how to use that thing. The e Cody you can you can use just as easily, but you, you got to learn you got to learn the buttons. Um, so so it's it, it's I mean I wouldn't say that it's not intuitive, but but if you're coming from from a little flapper knob, <laughs> then then uh, you, you know it's it, it'll take you a little bit longer to get used to it. So it's it's an epiglottis. <laughs> Look it up. <laughs> Don't look it's it up. Uh, this is a great question. It just came in. Light force uh, compared to Baja Designs or Rigid Industries. And I just want to say something right off the rip. One, shout out to Light Force. A lot of people know this, but Light Force is owned by Night Force. So there you go. They're Pro 2A. So that you shouldn't really need any more reason than that. I can answer this, though. Yeah. Because I ran, I ran the Rigid and the, yeah. the um, Night Force or the Light Force Lights. Yep. <clears throat> the light force lights are significantly brighter. Absolutely no comparison between the rigid IR lights and the light force IR, IR lights. The light force are way brighter. Yep. I have I don't know anything about the Baja designs. Um and, <clears throat> and rigid builds a good solid, you know, system, but the light force way, way brighter and they actually they're just as durable, just as easy to mount and they're cheaper. They're stronger. The light force yeah. is much stronger. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And the, the throw of a light force lights are impressive. Yeah. Like, they unbelievably impressive. But durability is up there for me. Yeah. Which, light which force. nanometer ones were you guys playing with? Like the 8th, 50s, 40s? Yeah. I'm, I'm also with light force as well. So, I mean, I, I've used them all and played with them all. And the uh, under the IR stuff, there's nobody out there that will be the light force IR lights. Mm -hmm. I will seriously yeah. fight you for that. And, and I think later <laughs> on this week we'll actually mm -hmm. have some discussion about mm -hmm. oh, yeah. light force awesome. and yes. green, white nanometers. So. Nice. so with light force being owned by night force, you can expect the same quality yeah. that night force puts into yeah. all their stuff. And then also, most importantly, I mean, I would say the majority of light force stuff is built and comes from, made from. Um, Australia yep. and I mean that's the true overlanding scene the originators of the overland scene period and so to have stuff that works overlanding to the outback I mean yep. that is a true testament to the system all the all the testing all the developing is done done down in Australia and it's not a hobby down in Australia it is no, straight up a, a lifestyle. lifestyle that's how it's they live survival. down there it's just survival so, for them you got to have a good rig yeah. 
you got to have shit that works. Um, so it is what it is. Best yeah. in the industry, really, yeah. guys. Otherwise, the wildlife will kill you. I was going to say, there's, like <laughs> everything there's more wild Just things. the spiders. Yeah. Just, Just everything. Just everything. everything. You go in That's your backyard and get one. punched by is a kangaroo. Is there, is there a way of life, though, because they can't have a gun, so if they get in danger, they have to run back in their truck? <laughs> <laughs> how does, it, how does yes. that work? Yes. You think as far as bad we could? They can only have boomerangs. Yeah. Did you guys see the video where that guy fist fought the kangaroo? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was only a dog, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was trying to get his he dog. He was trying yeah, yeah, yeah. to save his dog. He ran off at the kangaroo and That's literally years old squared up with the kangaroo yeah, yeah. and went yeah. whack, whack. Just gave him and the dog shoot, just like bro. looking at him Did like. Did he get hit? <laughs> The no, the kangaroo. Kangaroo, the kind of off. the fucking shit out of the kangaroo. Give him a two piece. <laughs> <laughs> that's, like two, that's like two or three years old now. Yeah. 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 But he that's went up. Did you see? Like he squared up. Yeah, he squares like, up. Like what? he's like, all right. Send me a link. And then the like, kangaroo looks at him like, just like, did that just happen? He's like, what? How dare you? Come at me, bro. I like yeah. that. That video is epic. That, that kangaroo had his dog in the headlock. Yeah. Like, what the fuck are you yeah. doing? The guy's just like, you ain't killing my dog. <laughs> yeah. Dogs like that. Huh. Boy, that's my dope. <laughs> yeah. My dope. Hypothetically <laughs> speaking, would you would four E Cody's fit on GP and NBGs? <laughs> Ooh, that'd be a headache. Hypothetically you know. speaking, yeah, I, I mean, so, yeah, they'll yeah. fit. Yeah. They'll, they'll, they'll fit. They'll like, fit. But so here's the thing. Fucking hell, that's a lot. Of Augie, find three more. And let's try this. <laughs> <laughs> let's try this. <laughs> let's try this. <laughs> We're live. Science time. It's a hundred and fifty thousand dollars. How yeah. much you carried on your head? I mean, in in, in, in all seriousness, the 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 E Cody thermal sensor, uh, it, it's offset. Um, from your image intensifier for, for obvious reasons, uh, and it projects that single thermal channel into your, uh, in, into your image intensifier tube. Uh, and the, the, the software and the algorithms that, that Optics One has got worked out to, to match the, that image um, to, your, your Im to your image intensifier tube are pretty good, uh, but there is still going to be a perceptible offset, so if you put four of those devices or even two of those devices on, on either eye, that offset, uh, not just because of the weight, it's just going to be, it's, it's not going to work. Um, it's not something that you're, you're going to be interested in doing. Yeah. Uh, I still think we should try it. We should do it. <laughs> that's how you open up like a third dimension or some shit like that. <laughs> hey, comment as much as possible and make him try it. <laughs> yeah, I think we could scrounge up for those uh, bastards right now. Dude, well, one of, them, one of them's down in Savannah River. Yeah, it's only like 20, 20 <laughs> minutes away from here. <laughs> yeah, if you guys want a free e you can, uh you can do some blackwater diving in the Savannah River. <laughs> if you find it, it's yours, I guess. I don't know. Finders keepers. You're I can tell you exactly where it. in the river it was. So. Well, where it was. Where yeah, it was. Yeah. Where it was. Yeah. Where it went in. The current strong. is gone, bro. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's see. So we're, we're watching the video over here of the dude hitting the kangaroo. Oh, yeah. Okay. Sorry. The kangaroo had him in a headlock. The, the kangaroo That's what had... we've been telling you. Can we splice that in? Can you splice that video in? That, 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 that sounds like Joe Rogan. Oh, that my video up, Mom. Watch him. What, 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 what? I love how he squares up. He squares up with it, and the what? kangaroo's like, what? Come on. Hit Come me. at me, bro. Hit me. And then he's like, all right. <laughs> And the kangaroo takes the punch, yeah. man. He's yeah, he's like, just like, he looks at the guy. He's like, did you <laughs> really just hit me? The kangaroo's head goes, ah. <laughs> like, That's great. Knock the shit out of That is the greatest video. I'm sorry. All right. Sorry. Back, to, uh, back to the. Let's see. Oh, this is a good question. This is probably going to raise uh, a lot of people are going to have mixed emotions about this, but I don't care. Whatever. Bring it. <laughs> have you guys ever run training with T-Rex arms? What do you guys gauge his skill level at compared to some highly trained dudes with time down range? All right, so I'll start off because I know everyone has a different opinion of everybody. Um, have we ever done training with him? No. I've known Lucas, though. I, I assume that's who you're talking about. I've known Lucas, though, for probably 10-plus years. I do consider him a friend. I understand that not everybody likes everybody in this industry, but me personally, I, I've always known him as a genuine dude. I knew him before he made probably $100 on selling holsters. That's how long I've known him. Um, what do you gauge his guys gauge his skill level at compared to some highly trained dudes with time down range. Um, he's a good shooter. I mean, he's a great shooter. He's a phenomenal shooter. He's even he's an even better communicator, in my opinion. And um, he gives away a lot of information for free and, and the stuff that he gives away. Um, and he takes time to give away. Uh, I think it's valuable information. Um, I've never trained with him. I've never trained, um, taken any of his classes per se. I don't know if he offers any I don't know if that's his thing, but uh, 
I don't know. I like him. I think he's cool. He shoots night vision, and he runs a hell of a gun. That's just my opinion on him. I think the same goes for anybody that offers training. Is you take nuggets of information from each individual, and you apply it to your own situation, and not nothing. I mean, the same things don't work for everybody. So right. Yeah. Right. I agree with it. Bill's going to have a lot of important stuff to say, and he's going to have some stuff that don't mean anything to me. Yeah. <laughs> That's most of the time. I mean, no, that's not true. 99.9. <laughs> Lucas buys stuff from TMBC, so, man. Well, it's like we talked about last night is explore, you know, other trainers. Yeah. Pick oh, yeah. up, you know, and, and like Tom said, pick up nuggets here. You're going to find things you like, take away, things that may not apply to what you're doing. And, uh, and, and the, the other thing, too, is, like, look at everybody who's sitting here and look at the age of, of Lucas, right? Mm -hmm. and, and really, that's a He's continuation, and, and, and it's guys like him that are going to continue, you know, promoting the industry and, 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 and advancing it mm -hmm. in, in ways that we may not even think about or consider. And, and so, right. you know, I'll say one, yeah, I never met the dude, but I one thing that's good about him is he can reach a demographic that most people aren't willing to reach out to. Yeah. Period. Yeah. Uh, easy. Cool. Heard yeah. good things about him. Yeah. yeah. Either way. Never met the dude. Um. Right. Let's see. Uh, spot or flood beam pattern. I'm, I'm assuming you're talking about a white light. Um. I mean. Everybody has a different opinion on mm -hmm. that. Um, it depends on what you're doing. Yeah. Application. What are you um, doing with it? Yeah, what do you? Yeah. How. Uh, that's right. so hard to answer. So, so here, here's my my opinion on that, right? So, white light stuff, um, it's it's used for a couple different things. You want to collect data, right? Because the area around you is dark, right? You're trying to collect data, so you need to see. So, you use it to collect that data, and then the other thing you use it for is for controlling, right? If I shine a light in your face, what are you gonna do? Do the squinties? Look at the light. Look away. Stop doing it. Pray for Jesus. Whatever it is. You're not going to be wanting to fight me, or it's going to stall you from trying to fight me. So if I can use direct light at your face, I can start to, to start effects <clears> on <throat> you and that aren't going to affect me. And I can collect data off of you. So if I put light in your face, I can see your hands, all that other stuff. Sweet. Makes it easier for me. Now, when people use a flood, what that just does is illuminate everything around you. So you could probably collect a lot of data. That's cool. But I can't really control people if they're like 20 meters from me. Mm -hmm. So I like to be able to control them no matter the distance. So I use uh, lights that have that same combination. The cloud defensive rain has a really good tight, tight spot and it has a really good fill or spill around it that helps me do both of those. And then so do the mod lights. So all the mod lights have a nice tight hot spot uh, like the PLH V2 and it has a really good spill. I still prefer the OKW though from Mod Light. I just want to add something real quick with Light Force since we're in Light Force's building. I like the floods, like a little different from firearms to vehicles. Um, I like the floods on vehicles, um, forward and rear. So just if you're talking about. So, something I would like to bring up <clears throat> in, in the event they're talking about IR, yeah. Yeah. Flood, uh, flood versus spot. Mm -hmm. I like spots dead center yep. pointing down the road. And I like floods on a 45 for ditch yeah. lights. Yeah. yeah. That's, the, that's the way I read That's the perfect it. world. And, it, and it, best case scenario, be more descriptive with context as to what your questions mean. <laughs> yeah. So that we don't go route, down yeah. right Be holes. better is what he's saying. Yeah. 20 minutes later. Do no. better, yes. <laughs> All right, guys. Real quick, we're going to go to a commercial break. If the live feed audio stops, we'll be right back on. So jump back on with us. Look for that notification. We'll be right back. We've got to refill on some brews and uh, take a commercial break. Hey, all you cool cats and kittens. Please enjoy a word from our sponsors. Go ahead, um, load up the trucks, let's get all the gear. We can load mags here, prep gear here, so the moment we get to the range, put the gear on, let's go. Um, for now, finish eating, let's clean up, and let's, uh, let's get moving. Let's go. Let's 
So today we're here at the range playing with brand new product from Safari Land. These are the RDS holsters. Technology advances every day. It's, it's new stuff is coming out every single day and it's not gonna stop. It's gonna continue to go forward. As this technology advances, Safari Lane is doing a wonderful job of making sure that they're keeping up with the times and making sure that the officers, uh, military personnel, law enforcement, everyone is getting taken care of. The beauty of these holsters, there's actual legitimate active locking systems that keeps the weapon housed in the holsters and only gonna come out when you want it to. In my testing and evaluation that I've done so far, there's absolutely no issues in terms of speed. So this one in particular is the 6365 RDS holster. So what differentiates this from most of the other RDS holsters is this uh, gives you three points of retention. The first point of retention is the actual holster itself, the kydex surrounding the holster. Boom. The second part is going to be the ALS, which stands for Safari Lane's automatic locking system. The beauty of this automatic locking system, it's super simple. All you got to do is get a purchase on the gun, get a grip, and with a slight motion of your thumb, you unlock the weapon from the holster itself. You can get a good draw. Afterwards, we have the SLS, which stands for the Safari Land self-locking system. Um, it's a manual hood that goes over the top of the gun, protecting the gun from coming out. As you place the fire with the holster, there's a suede on the side, so it prevents marring and kind of scratching of anything on the gun itself. These brand new RDS holsters are made for inclement weather. With the RDS hood that goes over the top of the optic, it's protecting the optic from dirt, debris, water, um, any kind of the elements as you're sitting outside in the range. Plenty of times on previous holsters, I've ran this gun in a holster with an open top. And so the issue comes into play now, um, you get pools of water, mud, dirt, debris, depending on what you're doing, running around, whatever. And so when you draw the weapon with intent to use it, what ends up happening is you get a messed up sight picture. It's completely horrible to look through and it's hard. So far that understands the need to protect this gear that's protecting us. Uh, whether it be from their body armor, or their holsters, or anything of the sort. Uh, they understand the importance of protecting the gear that could potentially save your life, and that's important. Are we back? We're yeah. back. All we're right, back. guys. Welcome gang, gang. back. The audio is working. Woo! Gang, gang. And the audio is working. And we're refreshed. Excellent. All right. Uh, before we get before we start going on any further, uh, I want to uh, go ahead and give a shout out to our sponsors again: um, BE Myers, Safari Land, uh, Optics One, Blue Force Gear, Weapon Outfitters, Roy, uh, Core Survival. Um, Emerson Knives, Light Force USA, Liberty's Defense, uh, and ACS Trigger, one of our, our our giveaway sponsors. Am I missing anyone? Opscore. Opscore. Uh, <laughs> cool. we, we did a lot of plug-in to Opscore tonight. So. Opscore is a great company. Listen to how, how good their customer service is. So, <laughs> Rafe wanted to know, could he give his email address out to anyone that had questions? He put it in the chat. Yeah, he put it in the chat. You know, Rafe, we we appreciate that man, but I don't understand. I don't think you understand the the can of worms that you're yeah, opening up bro, with us. this rowdy ass crowd. Bro, you're gonna get a at least one butthole pick email <laughs> too. So you don't want to do that, bro. You don't want to do that. So it's too late, dude. <laughs> hey, all's fair. You put it out there, somebody's yeah. gonna grab that. It thing. might be Eric's. <laughs> also, tomorrow night is gonna be our NGI takeover night at V Shot uh, Night Goggles Inc. Tom's company over here, so Tom is going to be running the show tomorrow for us. Yay. Ruh -ruh. <laughs> <laughs> we talk all things hunting. He's actually going to do his beard up for us live. I'll do a full uh, beard tutorial from the time I step out of the shower. Um, it's going to come in a towel so that we get it off that day. <laughs> yeah. You so need to do that. We're going to hose him off in the back. <laughs> we'll pull him out of the water. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, 
Okay, so we have a, a question here on uh, for op, for an obstacle helmet. What's the best mount for Peltors to the helmet um, rail mount uh, attachment? So there's a couple of cool ways. Obviously, the Unita, Unity Mark and Sarah adapters. I believe you need the Sarahs for no, the Peltor. No, for the MSA. no, that's right. Yeah. So the Unity Marks uh, they'll directly fit onto the Peltors, or you can go with the you can buy the OpsCore rail accessory connector arm, and then a company called Axle Advanced makes adapters mm -hmm. that you can attach to your Peltors to then mount them to the rack arm. So if you like the functionality of how the rack arms uh, kind of fold up on the helmet and they pop out like when you need to air your ears off or whatever, then go that route. Um, that's probably what I would do if I have to set up another comms <laughs> uh, system again with what I already have. I'm probably going to do the actual advanced route, but you can do it either way. The Unity Marks or the um, the Opscore rack arms with the actual advanced connectors. By the way, if you take a, a class from Duffy and you got the Opscore arms, mm -hmm. leave them out. He loves it. Yeah. It's like extra bonus points. <laughs> yeah. Speed brakes. Super fun. Yeah. Uh, Slap them. Um, another good question, and how bright is the built-in Illuminator DTT MVS? I don't know the exact output, but I mean it's nothing more than just a personal tie your shoes, yeah, yeah. admin for admin tying light. your shoes, or maybe something <laughs> so, like a ten by ten room or something. So the the way I've used my um, my IR onboard IR is pretty much for like small surreptitious shit, like if you're rummaging through drawers and shit like that. Depending on your job, I don't know, uh, but that would be the only use I would have out of those things. Doing something close up, really. You're not reading like maps with that thing. Uh, usually, just use a little red light or something like that. Nothing yeah. crazy. It's it's not much, but it's a uh, it's it's just called a personal personal navigation light, which I don't I don't think it's much more than maybe a ten by ten room for illumination. Just make sure if you're working with other people, you're turn not, that thing off after yeah, you're so yeah, looking turn, at Don't be that things. guy yeah. that has yeah. your yeah. onboard yeah. illuminator yeah, off, looking yeah. around at people, wondering why they're all. Turning okay. away from you. Did you guys ever use them as a link up mm -mm. procedure? No. Nope. Yeah. I, hell yeah, I did. Yeah, like, like, like two like will get you three. Them. That's like a real thing. You know, with yeah. just the the onboard IR. Like yeah. Bang bang bang. Huh. Yeah. That's that takes too much work. <laughs> <laughs> I would just go. Well, no. I mean, if you're spread spread over terrain and you need a recognition yeah. signal or I, something like that, yeah. I mean, yeah, I've no. used it like that. It's it, it the PBS 14 is actually really nice for that because yeah. it's got that spring-loaded mm -hmm. uh, spring-loaded illuminator knob yeah I always use the onboard illuminator stuff doing searches like in thick shit because the the weapon mounted IR was too bright like you got too oh, much yeah. flashback yeah. like the most oh, yeah. the most effective camouflage a human being can have is when they get fucking bombed and they survive but all the dust like fucking settles on them yeah like and that's what I use that thing for is to literally look like right in front of me because it's that nice soft light you yeah. know, get a whole bunch of splashback like can... uh, homie the clown smacked you with that fucking oh. tube sock with a yeah homie pretty much powder yeah. in it. you don't step on it dude <laughs> yeah homie don't play that mm -hmm. uh, that's probably before a lot of folks this time watching this you but, really uh, damaged yourself yeah yeah yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, man how yeah. you that home uh, light force giveaways someone asked about that um, yeah on Thursday we're giving away a ton of stuff from Light Force. They were gracious enough to sponsor this event and do giveaway items and host us here at the Light Force USA HQ on the East Coast. Shout out to Light Force. We really appreciate you guys for all you do. Uh, but yeah, Thursday, so um, you don't have to be watching, but you do have to be signed up for a chance to win with your email address. Again, we're giving away a ton of stuff. And uh, we'll also have some segments with night vision driving and some of the uh, some of the spot and floodlights that they have for uh, like overlanding and, and, and general purpose night vision driving and stuff like that. Because it's just cool to drive. Yeah, it's really cool to drive it's under just nods. Awesome. Especially on the interstate. Yes. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Fun fact it is uh, 2 30 in the afternoon tomorrow in Sydney, Australia right now. Yeah. All right. So they're not using IR. <laughs> not right now. <laughs> it's unlikely. All right. So. Just a quick break here. I want to say thank you to everybody that's already submitted their orders for the PVS 31s and the uh, the contract overrun DTMVSs that are hitting the website. We really appreciate you guys. We got the best customers in the world. You guys never cease to have made this. Um, you guys do so much. 
uh, and we continually work hard to bring you guys new things. And I know I've said it before, but uh, for everyone that used to complain about PBS 31s not being available to civilians, put your money where your fucking mouth is now. <laughs> uh, and you're they're welcome. Here. And you're welcome. And they're, they're clone correct. So. Flex <laughs> on all your friends, and if they break, they and can be fixed. And they're thousands less than gray market units. Yeah, they can't get fixed. So now all you dudes turn around with the gray market thirty ones that you've acquired somehow, and I'm talking about gray market shit, not not legitimate shit. Uh, good luck. Your asking price is far more than what a brand new is worth. So good luck with that, sir. Um, with those used 31, sir. It says good day, sir. Good day. And good day. And I challenge you to a duel. Yeah. Good day. Also, yeah, again, man, we work we work hard on bringing that stuff to you, to you guys. There's a lot of shit that we do that we don't put out on the internet for a good reason. And sometimes <laughs> things take a little bit of time to get and come to fruition. But we have always got our customers at the forefront of everything that we're doing, especially our dirty civilian customers or whatever you like to call them. Um, our regular folk like myself and everyone sitting here now, um, that's what we truly appreciate the most. Of course, we appreciate all of our public safety as well, um, but we understand that it is frustrating when you can't get things and you want them and they may seem restricted or out of, out of reach. But again, keep watching the rest of the week. We have more stuff like this coming along and we really appreciate all the orders. What he means is you're welcome. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> you're welcome. All right, let's see. Um, hypothetically, how many beers does Augie need to use to see 4E, uh, 4E Cody's on GPMVGs tonight? Hypothetically. Um, <laughs> well, we're going to find out. Well, <laughs> we're going to get there tonight. Either he'll do it when we, we tell him to, or we're going to beat the shit out of him <laughs> and force him to do it. You need another one? No, uh, so Augie doesn't metabolize beer like the rest of us regular people. <laughs> it's because of, you know how he is but uh it won't take many maybe like another one <laughs> yeah it's cool like i said nah, we it's already make... happening we're good it's already happening <laughs> it's gonna happen when he's quiet and he giggles in the background that means you know he's thinking about doing it so he's gonna do it tomorrow night you guys need to play augie 40 hands I'm going well to die tonight. Trying to hold those fucking DTMVSs. Yeah. <laughs> 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 fucking chunked him at the coffee table like he's Nolan Ryan in his fucking debut year. In the Touchdown, movie. bitch. <laughs> <laughs> fucking sidearm those DTMVSs. <laughs> Wouldn't have happened if he had a nerd. Yeah. Uh, what's the device that puts a compass overlay on Nod's called? I think that's just the standard. It's, a it's called a compass. Yeah, yeah so USGI compass. PBS 14 compass. Uh, yeah. I think we even sell them on the website, don't we? We do. Yeah. Yeah, yeah we, we sell do. them on the website. I uh, called them last week. Yep. Yeah, I mean, we sell them. We sell them. You could also or join the military, and they'll give you one, too. Um, they'll probably give you two or three, because yeah. they're kind of fragile. Yeah. <laughs> okay, this is a good one. <laughs> <laughs> this, is a battery on them. this is a good one. Uh, and I'm going to start off, and I think everybody can give their kind of two cents on it. Active versus passive NVG aiming. Um, oh. Both. Uh, options. Both. Yeah. They're options. They're both things that you should work on constantly um, in training and even, you know, doing your own thing at the range with nods. Um, I would say if there's near peer stuff where folks got night vision, passive. Um, but if the fucking bullets are flying at that point, I mean, it is what it is, right? So passive is good for near peer. So people that have uh, night vision that can also see you because lasers are a two way street, right? They can. You can see the point. They can see where it's coming from. Um, but then also, um, yeah, passive if you don't want to emit anything out there. But um, laser shooting is fun, and it's 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 good for doing government work, man. It's good stuff. Uh, anybody else have any comments or anything to add on that? Yeah. Probably about like 2012-ish, at least with my element. We started doing a lot of passive work, and it wasn't for any like – you know, oh, they can see our lasers or any of that bullshit. Uh, it was mostly because, hey, like, we spend all, all fucking day on the range, like, doing this, running guns like this. So as soon as the technology was there with uh, 31s and uh, some high-rise mounts for EOTX and stuff, it's like, hey, look, let's just start shooting like this at night because we can. And especially when you're working, you know, 50 and in. Yeah. And you're making yeah. high percentage yeah. shots, which yeah. I define as a three-inch circle. Yep. So that, that, that really helped out I, I will definitely say the finest the finest feat of applied marksmanship i've ever seen was was in a was in a fight on a moving target 
and uh, boy in front of me decides to like, get him, Piper, and he got that gun up and made a headshot at, I don't know, 27, 28 yards, but the dude was running, you know, and he decided, because afterwards when we AR'd, it was like, dude, why didn't you use your laser and just burn him down, you know what I mean? And he's like, nah, man, I just got red dot where I wanted, and popped it. Yeah, yeah and just wham, you know, like, made artwork, cool. you know, it was like, <laughs> it was like, hey, man, right on. Um, it, it actually got to the point where, you know, interior structure doing stuff. It's like, hey, use your laser, use your illuminator. And they're just like, I don't yeah. really need it. I just, I got this where I want it and yeah. it's good to go. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. So it's a system. It's good. Like obviously at 300 yeah. yards, I ain't making no shot with my freaking EOTech or my aim point at night. You know what I mean? That's, that's where the laser comes in. But Well, you can shoot around barricades with a laser. Uh, that's easy. Just yeah, 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 absolutely. Cover and position. There's all yeah. sorts of different ways to use yeah. it. Yeah, so it's, it's mostly, I guess, what I'm trying to say is mostly a skills transfer yeah. issue and not yep. a if yeah. then when type of thing. Right. Like, toolbox. You'll yeah. know it when the time comes kind mm -hmm. of thing, but you probably need to work with both. Take yeah. class. Another another reason I like uh, passive shooting is especially indoors. If uh, one dude's illuminating the hell out of something and they've got their laser on there. Yep. If a bunch of other people put lasers on there, it's like which yeah. one is mine? And then you start so, crossing streams. Yeah, yeah, and that's that's illegal. I guess so we learned in weird. 1983 yeah. that's a yeah, bad so yeah. if you go if you go passive <laughs> at that point. That's how AIDS came about yeah. actually. A bunch yeah. of people crossing streams in a room. And if you go <laughs> passive at like twenty five and in, you only have one mechanical offset you have to worry about. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. like a lot of people don't gather what I call like <clears throat> CQB dope with yeah. their lasers. Oh yeah. To like yeah, get yeah. that mechanical offset with their laser dialed in and stuff so it's like you know if you got if you got the skill set and the technology that supports it like yeah just throw that rifle up find some red dot go to work go to know? banging on them yeah mm -hmm. i have like two cents i want to add that take a class yeah like i'm being class. serious no, TMC, I don't want with this guy right here my boy yeah. don at green line yep take a class yeah. like that's where i learned all this stuff yeah learn, so, learn the things yeah learn the things before you do the things uh anybody else have anything to add I will say that, you know, people are like jump like size so I've said, man, two thousand twelve they started doing uh, passive aiming as like a as like a unit level thing. I will say though, it's not a new thing, uh, two thousand twelve and up. But as uh, popularity grows between people doing it for a living, right? So does the necessity for other folks to wanna do it and then grows uh, capability enhancements for that uh, which I will plug like unity's high yep. high mounts they're they're fast uh, mounts 2.26 over bore I think it's perfect uh, there's a couple different companies that are making uh, mounts that get your optic a little bit higher up there that way it's you don't have to get so far down on your gun like a cheek cheek weld you can do more of like a chin weld type thing the one I was showing you guys earlier yeah the one yeah. Duffy was yeah. showing you earlier um, well, I mean, it's kind of a mechanical problem because yeah. if, you, if, you, if you really think about it, you got these goggles sitting at least six inch sticking out from the front of your face. And, right. and you know, whether you realize it or not, most of the time, if you're getting behind like, like absolute co-witness or even lower, lower third, you you actually have to drop your head down into the into the stock. You're yep. having to look out the top of your eye rather than looking straight out your eye. Yeah. And when you got an extra six to eight inches sticking out in front of there, shit just starts colliding. Um, and it's hard to get into that passive position. So by it, by raising those optics, even by a little bit, you know, it's <laughs> it's a game of angles there. You're raising your optic, yes. your yeah, line of sight, just by a little bit. But that allows you to get behind it and actually keep your head straight, look through the center of your eye, and then you don't have as many issues with, with equipment impingement. Yeah. Those, those high mounts are great for neck injuries too. So like seven years of football. <laughs> saying like it's awesome to be a little heads up and if you want to have a lot of fun put a Steiner Tor Mini on a pistol that has a red dot on it mm -hmm. and go practice both ways with a with a handgun it's a it's a ton of fun he said, yeah he said both ways yeah. both yeah. ways I go both ways <laughs> both ways bro. I don't, I don't it's the beard <laughs> yeah uh, talk, let's talk see. passive aiming a lot a lost start is shooting iron sighted Pistols with bino night vision nuts. Yeah, mm -hmm. it, it, it absolutely is possible. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Just, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You got to run them nods like a champ. Yeah. If you have eye problems, it won't work. But yeah, yeah, because yeah, I always, I always focus. I focus my friggin' non-dominant eye side. on my front side post. Yeah, yeah so you get a friggin' draw stroke and be like, yep, that's where this shit's getting focused at. And you, you can make hits at fifteen and in, no, no problem. Yep. Uh, let's see. 
movies. And you go overboard with MVGs. Um, go overboard? I don't really. Four, uh, four, uh, four E. Cody's on If you mean I have 250K wrapped around my head. I saw yeah. that show with my own two eyes. Uh, yeah. Sam Houston went Sam. overboard with Night Vision Cop. Yeah. <laughs> in, the daytime, in the daytime, he went overboard. Okay, uh, are we that was, saying overboard is in over the boat? Or are yeah, we saying overboard is in like too both. much money? That was, no, they they that was, that was kind of my fault. It could be both. Yeah. <laughs> Were you driving the boat? I was. Depends oh, on your budget. Oh, so it's yeah. your fault. Can you go overboard with purchasing? I mean, I don't really know. That's like saying yeah, that's too out. much ammunition. There's no such thing. No such that's thing. like saying you have too much money. Fuck off. I, 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 mean, I, guess, I guess you can if you don't have money to spend. Is yeah. your wife watching this? And that's yeah. why you're asking for us to give you permission. But <laughs> or yeah. your husband watching this? Or your husband's this, you know? watching this. There's ladies that like night vision too. True. Do you need uh, nods to take a Night Fighter 101 class or armed? Um, that's a good no, question. That's a, that's a great question. And <clears throat> no, you don't. Uh, we have rental program. So we keep... Uh, Tell them about what's in our own program. I'm just about to. Oh. <laughs> I'll let you take can, it away. Can, 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 can I continue? <laughs> Bill, tell so, them all so, about it. Hey, um, Bill, hey Kane, why don't you tell them, them about the rental tell program? Tell them about the, the rental, rental program. program. Tell yeah, them yeah. about the rental program. Yeah, so rental program, tell guys, we keep, uh, we keep uh, six complete sets. we got helmets, uh, binoculars, MVGs, mount, or lasers, mounts. You can rent it. Uh, in any any level of it, so a la carte, if you just need goggle, whatever, um, and so you can rent the gear. You we you get for the duration of the class, and then at the end, uh, that proportion of the rental gear can be used towards uh, your purchase of night vision if that's what you decide to do. So, tell tell them what. Okay, what kind of goggles? Thanks, Eric. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> primarily, we're looking at uh, DTMVSs, uh, white phosphor. What? So you can we'll rent those. Rent them. We'll have uh, one set of greens, uh, and then uh, if you want to try a 14 or a RMVG with some uh, advanced notes, we can make that happen too. So, uh, yeah, that's part of the part of the, what we can do for you at the, at the class. Take it on yeah. test drive. Same, same with all the kinetic night vision based classes. I have uh, RNVGs, a 14, soon to have DTMVGs and DTMVS that could be rented. Green Line has rental stuff too. Yeah, well, Green Line with Don Don Edwards. Don has more than all of us combined. Don has rental gear. That boy's got some night vision, man. Him and Sam. Yeah, they uh, have no rental stuff. You better show up with your shit. (laughs) (laughs) They own a platoon size element of fucking night vision gear. Almost. Show up your shit. Um, Let's see. What's everyone's go-to optic for passive aiming? I like EOTech. Yeah, like it's just EXPS about to ask that is, question among the group. Um, that's just me. I like the bigger window box. It's, it's more yeah. forgiving. It's easier for me to find. Prior to the fast mounts, I would agree with you, but yeah. now it's kind of a... Yeah. It, it it, as long as all this is there, like you're gonna, it's going to pop up in front of your yep. head. But yeah, because I would agree, prior to the fast mounts, the EOTechs had a slight advantage mm-hmm. because of just all that stuff. Yep. Uh, well, but now the aim points... The thing I like about the EOTechs is, is first of all, like that that night vision button, which is a lot for me at least. I prefer that to to dial in the aim point back. And I mean, we'll talk about rifles. I got I, I got aim point micros and stuff mm-hmm. like that too. I mean, I I, I run them all. Uh, but if you're talking about passive aiming in isolation, uh, I do prefer the, having that night vision setting. And so long as your EOTechs working properly. It should remember what those settings are yeah. when you switch back and forth from daylight to night vision, and then it's got something like what ten night vision settings versus you know four with like a micro or like two with an acro or something similar mm-hmm. like that. Um, and because of the kind of the holographic lens technology, you don't need the same kind of coatings that you do um, on like a tube style. Uh, yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. on, on a tube style red dot and so you get more light transmission through the lens assembly so if you're talking so if that's the only consideration that you have is is yeah. night vision passive aiming I would say that EOTech still rules the roost uh, dominates um, uh, unchallenged but see I, it's I not day you. night yeah, yeah. it's <laughs> I'll run my T1 so well, well <laughs> give him the business so stuff with, <laughs> with passive aiming right if we're looking at like EOTech to EOTech or EOTech to something else um, on the holographic side, the Vortex freaking UH1, mm-hmm. right? Uh, the Gen 2 and the Gen 1 are actually huge windows. 
mm-hmm. and they have a similar reticle, but they, they do almost the same thing, but uh, but they don't have the, the word EOTech on them. <laughs> and then, <laughs> which is great. No, uh, <laughs> you can trust them. No, um, but uh, they they also, I think, I think they are huge, huge, huge competitor for the Vortex. I actually prefer, prefer the Vortex over the EOTech. But over Fair all enough. of them, I still I still prefer my T one. Yeah, I go I go T one T T two for me. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. I, I'm, any of the T's. Yeah, any yeah. of the T's. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. Any of the micros. Well, I mean, like I said, it, you, yeah. you know, if you're if you're considering <laughs> like multiple factors T's across the board, yeah. because you know, night vision <laughs> passive aiming is not the only thing that that yeah. you know, any of us are wor- are, yeah. are are worrying about, and that's that's why you know yeah. I've got a mix of except yeah, on a various hand different athletes. I'm a big fan of the aim points. I'm sorry, I've been running them for twenty plus years. And, and when you say passive aiming, you kind of need to put a like a capability on it, like passive aiming, high percentage shot at 25 and in. That's really about the extent of it. You know, I'm not passive aiming shit at 300 yards or 200 yards or whatever. That's that's yeah. laser territory. Yeah. So, Absolutely, you can yeah. goof off and do it. Yeah, 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 sure. Yeah, it's a magnifier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if John Ingle's watching this, hi, John. Do you guys sell? I don't even know if Team VC sells those old. PBS 14 three yeah. power max. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Max. I carried one of those even with 31s because I just hold that bitch up. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, it still it's works fine. Yeah. Like, you oh, just yeah. touch that bitch up there and be like, oh, okay. Some eaters, yeah, right? yeah. See, I like, I like these <laughs> So, what I'll do is I'll, I'll connect that 3X with my PBS 14 and yeah. then a phone mount. And then if you use a veil, you can do some seriously good surveillance with yeah. wow. oh, yeah. that's a, a no, no, so it's, yeah. it's something I teach with uh, with the law enforcement guys that are doing like they're doing drug shit or the SWAT team doing yeah, surveillance doing before yeah, hits or whatever it is. Yeah. Right? They they're able to do surveillance now under nods with that three X magnifier, yeah. the PVS fourteen and the phone mount. Yeah. yeah. Back, and, and a small black veil. Back in the day yeah. when we had fourteens as a machine gun team leader, like as a, the AG calling shots, I'd like have that thing connected and mm-hmm. you'd have to move and be like, shit, it's still on and you're like, fuck I'm <laughs> <laughs> like, shit, pull that thing off and hold it in your hand, you know, and like go to where you're going like this. Objects and objects and nods. Yeah, run, running running around with a fixed set of three power nods is not where you want to be. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Where are my hands? <laughs> yeah, there you go. Mm-hmm. This is it, man. Wow, this brings back memories. Yeah. <laughs> I still have mine in the green case, too. Yep. 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 <laughs> That'd be it. Uh, what did you guys do in the past? Like, LEO mirror experience, mill experience, SF deployments. Um, Jesus. Well, we could talk about it. Yeah. Still works at night, even without knives. Yeah, yeah. Still still your night. eyes really big. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is actually what I use to inspect like money and shit too. Look at maps. Days. Like, yeah. 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 What I do is inspect my cocaine. Yeah. Know, so I just look at that real sharply with it. Yeah. Gotta use it to find your, you know. Uh, yeah. I do the little weapon test. Yeah. <laughs> I like it's it. good. It's good. Yeah, the old Alice clips. It's good. Clips. It's good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's the. It's the devil's dandruff right there. Yeah, ours always had like 550 cord, you know, and then like duct tape or 90 mile an hour tape or whatever. <laughs> so I can like three feet of sh- fucking tie down with a carabiner. So when you put it on, you clip it. And be like, All right, cool. You take it off. So, so you don't lose out. it when you fall off the boat? <laughs> <laughs> I say I'm like a boyo. Like, take it off. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, go ahead, Tom. Kick it off, Tom. A lot of people don't know this about me, but I come from an LE background. I um, joined the police academy at 23 years old, was hired on by a local agency, started out just a routine patrol officer, um, got promoted to detective within the first five years, and then did undercover narcotics for a pretty good stint. Um, Still does. (laughs) <laughs> but just not to cover. I work for free. <laughs> yeah. no, mostly a user. Now, mostly I'm, now, I'm a, now I'm a CI instead of a. a I actually uh, I worked a lot of really high profile cases. Believe it or not, in Utah, a lot of people um, are surprised to hear that. But we did undercover buys with. Uh, with the cartels, um, the Sinaloa cartel, all the way up there in Utah. Uh, a lot of SAC and SAW members. Um, took down uh, some of the, the biggest white supremacist um, drug dealers in the country. Um, and we kicked a lot of doors. We served all our own no-knock search warrants, um, along with uh, a SWAT team. And 
you got to use nods and thermal and all that for surveillance and um and you guys like ran and slid over the hood of cars to get in it and shit yeah well it's yeah. it's just like that show in our <laughs> yeah. house, right exactly just like, like that they yeah. took down pablo it's escobar like, like that. you didn't have belt buckle with a, a, a in Noriega's house starsky and hutch <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah so like they fucking hit jared from subway shit <laughs> 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 They fucking put Martha Stewart in prison. <laughs> he was guilty. <laughs> That's what happened to Epstein. Yeah, so I left that about 12, 13 years ago, something like that. Damn. A long time ago. Cute. Never looked back. Well, you couldn't grow a beard. Well, you probably could. Well, I could grow a beard. You could grow a beard. Yeah. 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 You, you always I've been growing a beard since I was 12. I was about to say, who's born, <laughs> who's born with that beard? Wait, do you have baby pictures where you Photoshop that beard on? Yeah. And show your kids and stuff? You didn't even need a Photoshop. That'd be awesome. I was about to say, he came out. <laughs> oh, I can't. I would totally mess with my children that way. <laughs> oh, man. I'm going to I'm gonna Photoshop me with night vision on, coming out of the womb and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How about you there, Bill? Uh, 22 years in the Army. I might be the only one here at the group that's been chaptered out of the Army. Chapter, yeah. Yeah, chaptered. yeah. Yeah, I was chaptered out of the Army. Um, yeah. Is <laughs> that where they, like, break the bottle? Or yeah, yeah, no. Well, I was enlisted, and I got, I was enlisted and I got my scholarship, so they had to chapter uh, me out of the yeah. Army, too. Yeah. Uh, so I could, Honorably uh, be, chaptered. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah it's chapters and chapters and chapters. So. Um, so yeah, those? did 22 years that. in the Army, and... Um, Got to do work in a bunch of different units with a uh, do a lot a lot of fun stuff. So um, yeah, that's it. Yep, my background is law enforcement. Um, started off as a regular patrol officer, which I don't mean anything condescendingly. Patrol is the backbone. So everybody does. Started off as a patrol officer. Uh, moved my way into narcotics, and then gang stuff. Um, <laughs> Started a gang. No, just kidding. Uh, <laughs> Definitely didn't stop narcotics. Uh, roughly 10 years, and I was also assigned to the SWAT team as a, as a guy that just did some stuff on the SWAT team for about eight years. So, yeah, and before that, I was just, you know, regular person. Did you drive a Monte Carlo? With uh, switches and shit? No. no. Uh, actually, <laughs> it was a Ferrari. Yeah, yeah. I had, yeah. A, yeah. I had a bunch of cars, but uh, <laughs> my, my favorite was a V8 Forerunner. Hell yeah. And that bitch was bad fast. Hell yeah. <laughs> but I never went above the speed limit, though. No. <laughs> never. Not with that ever. Yeah. Policy states. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> ever. Gotta do some fun stuff. Um, but yeah, before that, I was just a regular kid, did graphic design in school and a little bit of college and then um, skateboarded, still skateboard and play rock and roll music. That's pretty much it. Walk on water. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Turn water make, into wine. bread. Yeah. Now, now he's NV Jesus. Yeah. Now I'm the NV Jesus. Feed the masses with two fish. Don Edwards is the god, the nod father. The nod father. Oh, that's good. I like yeah. that. I like that. That's perfect for him. So... My background is uh, Army, Army National Guard, uh, basically just, just cavalry and infantry units, um, nothing, uh, nothing special or uh, remotely special, though I, I rubbed shoulders uh, with some interesting folks here and there. Um, he doesn't stop yeah. touching my shoulder. <laughs> it's really weird. <laughs> wow. Okay. Oh, my turn? Uh, so, <laughs> well, that's how this is gonna go. Long, I was I was expecting him to talk more. He said, <laughs> he said, oh. "That's the shortest conversation I'll ever yeah, spoken." That's the shortest little bit that he's ever spoken. Uh, so uh, I was in Third Bat, Seventy uh, Fifth Ranger Regiment. Um, I spent five years there, and uh, once I got out, I got into the security industry and did some uh, private security for a bunch of different industries, like uh, the government side and also the uh, private side, like celebrities and things like that. It was really boring, and uh, I, if you can, just don't do it. Um, Didn't you protect and, Richard Simmons? No. <laughs> <laughs> he was my mentor. And, uh, <laughs> so, you know, I came I, up with the shake weight. I, I, think, fucker. I think he has the best energy. <laughs> <laughs> 
You were always seven minutes. <laughs> yeah. You were always bringing up the seven rear. minutes. That's way too long. <laughs> Six minutes. On the close um, protection detail, Duffy was always in the rear. <laughs> hey, somebody's got to watch the badonka donk. Uh, but really, like it, it was just boring. Uh, you sit around a lot. It's just not not fun at all. Um, and then uh, in, in between that time, I started my own company, and I was also consulting for a lot of different industries. And now I own Kinetic Consulting. Damn. I'm 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 an absolute nobody. Never did anything cool. I was a, been in the industry for 25 years. Been working for gun companies, knife companies, and gear companies. Um, the coolest thing I ever did was I was a volunteer fireman and a volunteer coast guard. So you were on a, <laughs> we're on a couple milk cartons. Boy. He's, yeah. he's being, he's being modest. Guard? So yeah. he has two. Uh, amateur pornos. <laughs> one is. I showed you that in confidence. Bro. One is called Candy Cane, and the other one is Hurricane. Category five. <laughs> Both fantastic. He's working on his third though, Raisin Cane. Coming out soon. <laughs> and in the later years, they'll be Walking Cane. Walking Cane. <laughs> That's actually happening really soon. And then, and then his retirement one will be Cane. You Cane. You just not. <laughs> cane. You just not do that. Cane anymore. not. No mo. No mo. I can't compete with multiple pornos. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but you can. Yeah, no well, you can be in one if you want. Uh, you want to join one? I did. Yeah, no, we'll talk. <laughs> I, gotta, I got you. Um, he came now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I did 20 years in the Army. I did uh, 16 years in the Ranger Regiment. Uh, all the battalions before people ask, so I talk shit about all of them. Every one of them. Yeah. Um, got a combat scroll from all of them. Um, did a couple more years with a different agency, and it sucked, so I retired uh, just last year and moved back to Savannah and started talking with Blue Force Gear, and they, they decided to start a, uh, a training wing of the company so i'm director of training blue force gear now so yeah that's that's me 16 year i was an infantry guy so i did all that stuff uh who recce guy sniper guy breacher got bit by a dog once you know <laughs> that's, all that, that's all, cool all that crap. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> covered all of them <laughs> yeah. i'm pretty sure everybody got bit by a dog in yeah exactly yeah. yeah it's not uh yeah, yeah. I got bit no no i'm so. saying like no. if you're in range regiment oh, you've probably gotten bit by a dog sorry yeah, yeah. yeah. uh so yeah fuckers. that's me we need Duke here right now. Where's Dukey? Where is Duke? We need Duke the Defender here. Poor guy. He's probably bored. He is. He's Instagramming live right now. He like he's, been, he's watching us right yeah. now. Oh, Every little pick, noise yeah, is going pick, off. He's like, Mom, Dad, no. Start no. This <laughs> <laughs> he's or, he's, good. or he's peeing on the carpet. Like, all right, they don't want me there. I don't want them here. <laughs> I don't want them. Duke doesn't do that. He's probably in a kangaroo headlock somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> Dude's got the Waiting for Thomas to come like, like, are you going to punch this guy or what? <laughs> Thomas, probably... would you punch a kangaroo for Duke? Come on. 100%. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. 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 <laughs> would you take a punch for Duke? Every day. Okay. We, we love Duke the Defender, man. You guys don't know who he is. That is the best dog Look in the world. Look him up on Instagram. Look him up. He's got more followers than I do. That dog is awesome. All right. Next question. Uh, someone asked if full auto is worth it, like the no. totality, like the expense and everything. Well, no. Can I say something? Not. Quick? Yeah, go ahead. So full auto is like a boat. Have a friend with a boat and have a friend with a full auto. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's yeah. A, Just saying. It's honestly a, a, it's pretty a waste good. of yeah. money for how much you pay to get the capability and the process it takes. And then also, you it's seriously, I mean, we've all been issued that shit. Uh, you might do it for like a mag or two. Yeah. And it's cool to like show someone that has never seen anything like it, but other than that, it, it's a waste of money. If it's Unless government you're... supplied and government funded, yeah. all yeah. day long. I mean, I, I I love them when when, when it's the government's when it's the government's machine gun and the government's ammo. Yeah, but, uh, as a civilian, unless it's an investment purpose and you get one for a really good price, I, yeah, you can make some money on it. Yeah. But you can flip stuff like that. Yeah, they're big Blast bucks, boys. Force on force. Like, save the money. Use it for night vision. <laughs> Boom. Yeah. That's yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, so so you know, I don't I don't know if this bugs anyone else. Like, and I understand that it's like the ATF's uh, definition of what a machine gun is. But you show me an M16, that that's just not a fucking machine gun. <laughs> I, I, and and it just it just irks my OCD when it, when it comes to that nomenclature. Maybe it's because you know I was a heavy weapons guy. Uh, a machine gun is a machine gun is a machine gun, preferably belt fed. An M16, an MP5, an Uzi is not a fucking machine gun. I'm sorry. 
Yeah. You're right. An MP5 is a sub. <laughs> sub <laughs> I'll take a Knight's LMG, though. So. Yeah. The, oh, the wow. ability to, right. like, make noise doesn't win fights. Now that, got now that we got the true. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let my, me get that pedantic my rifle. Issue weapon <laughs> for, yeah. My, my issue issue weapon for kicking rifle. noise was UMP40. <laughs> <laughs> so, <Nice. laughs> so a mule. <laughs> <laughs> All yeah, right. If you want to play around with a uh, full auto, just get an airsoft rifle and get a full auto airsoft rifle and do that. That's kind of fun. That's fun. It is. That's fine. And if you haven't done it, just go to a range and, yeah, and rent it and, and shoot it. Because it is fun and it's, it's fun. exciting, but it's, it's fun. five it's minutes. Expensive, yeah. but it's not worth it. But overall. how much you got put into it versus what you get out of it? Yeah. Or what I, I, I use them on a the flat range when I, I had a couple from work to validate a shooting stance. That's it. Yeah. That's yeah. all it's used for. It's like, mm -hmm. hey, if you can hold this trigger down for 30 rounds and not come out of it, you're solid. Yeah. It, that's it. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah. It's like extreme <laughs> validation. <laughs> well, the, the funny thing is because you get dudes on the flat range, like, you know, holding a gun or whatever, and you're like, all right, dude, put that thing on group yeah. therapy. Put some ass into and it. And then yeah. the first thing they do is, like, shift their feet. <laughs> <laughs> and you're like, no, bro, that's... Get in, do it. That, if that's, that's what it takes, be. that's your fucking position. It's not, yeah. So yeah. they're good for validating that, but that's about it. Uh, somebody asked about binary triggers. I don't know. I don't know. A fucking thing about binary triggers. <laughs> is that um, like when you go from like, yeah. you know, so like no, not yeah, like, it's, no, 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 it's it, it's one of those ones where no, you, no, know, no, you, you know, you know, Kano's right. I know exactly where he comes from. Don't choose a gender. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was about to yeah, say. It's like non binary. Those are, it's I don't a non binary triggers are just ones that don't choose a whether they want to be full auto or, or semi. semi. Uh, There's in between. There's in between. They just do what they want. So this is very educational for everyone. They're not red or blue. They're purple. No, no, no! They're not even purple. They're they're whatever, yeah, whatever color. They're, they're not. They're not his, her. They're like. <laughs> wow. Here's the thing, though. Uh, just, just do what you want. Do what do what's gonna make you happy. If binary triggers or something that interests you, get one. If do you, you, like you like it? If you don't, you don't. You know, sure. I don't know anything about it, but I'm not gonna knock what one one person is doing uh, versus murder. another. I mean, murder today. Everybody today. wants to do their own thing. Do your own thing. That's cool. Do you, boo? I wouldn't recommend bringing one to class though. No. It might be a little distracting. Uh, yeah, yes. Oh, uh, this is a good one for Tom. I love hearing Tom talk, so I want to <laughs> really give him this question. Yay! Um, his velvet voice. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> has Tom, has Tom done thing? any big game hunting under NV Ooh, or no. thermal? That's a, good one. That's a damn good question. So, actually, in the state of Utah, it's illegal to use night vision or thermal for big game hunting. But I use thermal for spotting big game all the time, especially during the day. Believe it or not, you can pull out a thermal, scan a hillside in a matter of seconds that would take you maybe hours under normal daytime glass and Ooh, know yep. if there's a heat signature bedded on the hill. Yeah. Uh, the cool thing is I can pull it up and I can tell you where every heat signature is in seconds and then I can go to my daytime glass and tell you what it is after you know I've found it in thermal. But man, it's a valuable tool. That's, That's a nice freaking awesome. Yeah. I have a question for you, dude. Like, I don't know fuck all about hunting and all that stuff, yeah. but I, can you like night vision hunt with a bow at night? Have you ever mounted like a 14 to mm -hmm. a bow or some crazy did, shit? Did you not hear? Well, like crossbow, <laughs> not like <laughs> like you talking like a Rambo. In bow Utah, you in Utah, you wouldn't vision. be really. It wouldn't be legal because you're not allowed to have any electronical aid. Oh, no shit. Really? Yeah, no <laughs> electronic aid whatsoever wow. attached to your bow. That includes a rangefinder. That includes a, a uh, magnifier. Get out of here, optic. really? It's super yeah. weird. So it, it would probably depend on the state law. Okay. In Texas, you can probably do whatever the hell you want. <laughs> <laughs> I would just say. I mean, tipped arrows. Us boys down in Florida can do whatever the freak <laughs> we <laughs> want. <laughs> in, in Texas, you can shoot the PBS-14 at that. <laughs> <laughs> I think Sam Houston was talking about building a spear with an IR laser on it oh, to man. use under with knobs to spear hogs with. Sam, Sam if you're watching this, call me. We need to do that. Yeah. Right. So, come to my house. I mean, Let's go as long as it doesn't have hogs. an E Cody on it. <laughs> Why is that? Why is that? It's on more than a square knob. Uh, we'll, we'll show you guys a video maybe one day. Yeah. Oh, uh, thoughts on pinning regulation for nogs. No, it's not related. I, yeah, we, we got asked night. that last night. It's probably a different person if yeah. it is. It's no big deal. Um, I haven't heard anything down uh, the pipeline. We're not, we're There's not, not a single, single manufacturer that's in the NV, uh, industry that's ever even peeped a word about it. Night vision is primarily flown under the radar 
uh, for good reasons. Um, there is no regulation at all other than non-U.S. citizens can't obtain it and you can't go outside of the country with it. Um, but other than that, I mean, it's just fair game. But, but don't start asking the question. Yeah, don't, yeah, yeah, but, yeah, but please, don't, don't be the mother yeah. may I. Don't I? fucking write a letter to the State Department or whoever the hell and start putting ideas in their heads. Don't do that shit <laughs> like they did the ATF um, mm -hmm. with the fucking bump stocks and braces, braces and all that other shit. Don't do that. Um, just, just, just do what you normally would fucking do and, and keep your mouth shut and you don't own anything. <laughs> um, you clip on. Um, Thank you, sir. Appreciate that. Excuse me. We, yeah, we, uh, we're going to go into depth on like future clip on stuff on Thursday. We've got, we got a segment on it and stuff like that. So we won't really waste time going over like, uh, like what we can say in words that we have a whole video on. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I, uh, going back to this wow. potential regulation, I mean, no one really knows what's going to happen. Stop. So, to sit around and what if, to what if everything to death, it's just, dude, that's a miserable life to live. Uh, just fucking do what makes you happy and, uh, you know, live your life. You can't always be worried about, oh, well, what's this administration going to do versus that administration? And I know you might not be meaning that or not implying that, but, I mean, I do what I want. I don't know about anybody else here, but I do what the fuck yeah. I want. So. I do too. Um, and... You know, my name's Bennett. I wasn't in it. You know what I mean? So, did you bring your permit? Yeah, yeah, so, so movie quote? <laughs> you, yeah. you, yeah. oh, yeah. yeah. you lost me on that one. Yeah. It just says I do what I want. Exactly. I do what I yeah, want. I have, a, I have a permit. It you don't own me. It says I do what I want. Uh, let's scroll back. How many people do we got watching um, right now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We've, we've been doing this all for one for person. Three people. Yeah. <laughs> hey, you know what? Yeah, it's about 120. Wow. Oh, awesome. Jesus. It's Hi, Andrew. Uh, yeah, yeah. They're just sponsors. watching you all talk. What's that? <laughs> Not really many questions. They're just watching There's no you. questions? Like, give us something interesting. Give us a question. Yeah, I mean, if, if y'all don't right. ask questions, we're not, we're not going to keep talking. Yeah, give um, us a question. They're falling asleep. And yeah. Yeah. So yeah. what's, uh, I'll start. This is, they just lost their always an argument. Favorite beers? Beers? Yeah. Favorite beer? Uh, Miller High Life. Okay. Yeah. I went through a phase, like, in my younger 20s when I was at in Tacoma, in yeah. Second Range Battalion, where I was, like, a total beer queer. Like, all, like, ooh, like, yeah, micro yeah. beer, yeah, 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 bullshit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, like, you the, get over that hump, and you're like, I don't like give a Rainier, fuck Fucking anymore. Seals like, of the Ranger Battalion. Yeah, it's like, just, Granola Rangers. just give me some Miller High Life, I'm good to go. Or yeah, PBR. Yeah. Like, whatever's PBR. really shitty and cheap is, like, probably what I'm going to drink. <laughs> Fuck yeah, dude. <laughs> um, my favorite beer, if you know me, is Tito's. So, <laughs> just saying. Is that a beer? Yeah, it's a, it's a everything. All right. That's why I don't get sick. So, so I don't actually drink beer, so I drink water. It's boring. That's why he looks like that, and I look like this. Good? <laughs> yeah. I, uh, you know, I mean, if I, if I was going to pick one that I just like to keep around the house, probably just straight Budweiser. Yeah, I'm yeah. with Augie on that one. I'm a Bud Heavy kind of guy. Um, usually tall cans, uh, but you know that uh, that buddy light, you know, as a secondary, and then PBR is good too. Uh, I'm with Duffy. Uh, yeah, don't, don't really drink that much. The only beer I drink is root beer, and I drink a shitload of it. <laughs> you got the truth, man. Uh, Henry Weinhardt's is probably my favorite. A and W is hard to beat. Yeah, with or without beat. ice cream. I was about to say, do you put ice cream in? It's great without okay. ice cream. Okay. Yeah, okay. So yeah. you you and John Hollister need to talk about root beer, man. Yeah. He's a root beer fanatic. Yeah, root beer's, beer's good. People yeah. sleep on root beer. That's good. Root beer's good. Homemade root beer Ooh. is yeah. hard to beat, you know. Ooh. Fucking six pack of IBC. <laughs> Bam! Yeah. It just got real. Have you guys ever done shoot shoot the root? If you get root beer schnapps, pop it oh, in a yeah. beer. It's sort of like a. Oh, it's amazing. It's like A and W root beer. Yeah, it's yeah. good, dude. Uh, yeah, it'll get you drunk. Oh yeah, it'll get you there. Yeah. It'll, it'll get, get you there. Drunk. Um, let's talk about uh, like range attire. Anybody got any thoughts on like good uh, like wet weather inclement weather gear? Oh. I uh, we get this question a lot, so what do you guys use on the range? We're on the range a lot, so what do we use on the range? Um, what we're going to be using. What we're going to be using <laughs> is, is uh, Audi gear, O-T-T-E uh, gear. Um, they make great stuff. I don't know if anybody's got a jacket handy that we can show. Yeah, they, uh, <clears throat> we're running the patrol jackets. 
Well, it's Camp Black. They're pretty... Uh, Oh, I thought you guys were already sweating these and got them all dirty. <laughs> yeah. No, 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 no. They're, they're, uh... Mobby. Oh, I remember what she was wearing. I looked at her. Yeah. Yeah. I looked at the dead like game. I looked at her. I did like, hey, you are living. You're mine. All right, yeah. we got another question. Are we Let's live? Let's see. Yeah, we're live. We're back live. Okay, here we go. We're back. We're back um, live. Are op score comms worth it over 3M? Um, and with those, can you go straight to Bay of Fang, or do you need some special... Adapter. Oh, I, um, no I personally think Opscore comms are worth it over just about anything else out there. Dude, they're awesome. want the capability to go between helmet mounted and over the head and under like a minute swap, then go with that. Um, over well, the 3M, I don't know. I mean, it, I think they're better, yes. I mean, so, so you know, the thing that I love about the amps and the first time that I used the amps, uh, when, when Rafe, Brought them, uh, brought them to one of our classes uh, to, to show to us was, um, you know, so they, they have directional microphones. You get that 3D hearing environment, and I get it that like the, the contact sixes and stuff. They, 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 I think have have something like that now. Um, but, but uh, you know, between that and the NFMI capability, I think the audio quality is is just better with with the Opscore amps. Yeah. Um, I mean, I. I wouldn't kick a Comtac six out of bed, but but I mean, obviously, I, I choose Opscore. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Well, the if other benefits that they, they didn't mention too is like the down lead. Yeah. You can you can undo the down lead. Yeah. And and then you can swap it out, use a yeah. different kind for a different kind of radio, whatever you want. And you could also take the boom mics off, which you can you can do on the 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 Comtax Comtax. too. Yeah. But you could also switch the boom mic to the other side, yep. Yep. which yeah. on some of the Comtax you couldn't do. Mm. So just something something really cool. I think I think that down lead in general, just to take it off if you're not using it. Like I can take it off, I can roll it up, put it somewhere else, and then I'm good. It's not like dingle dangling around, and I don't have to tie it up. I don't have to zip tie it. I don't have to like wrap it up with a rubber band. I don't have to do anything stupid with it. Yeah. So the Opscore amps with the rack accessory arms, they're pretty much everything I ever wanted out of um, EarPro and a comm system, all wrapped into one. All the other shit that I was issued, I just got so frustrated one way or the other with it, that this is pretty much just the answer. And, I mean, I know we sound like a broken record here, but the, it, it just fucking works. It's good shit. Well, in police work, that's called a clue. clue. Well, and I think the next part of that question about adapting it for different kind of radios. Okay. So if you get the uh, the U one seventy four down leads. I mean, that's that standard. I mean, it looks just like a giant microphone jack. If you've been in the service, you probably use you know various PTTs from from TEA and and um, you know all 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 of those uh, different options. So anything that most most things that you would use to connect a contact to any kind of radio, whether it's a Baofeng or or a Prick 152, uh, is going to work with those those uh, U174 down leads. Yep. Um, Opscore does have their own Amphenol uh, style down lead and PTTs, but if you have any kind of legacy systems, um, it'll plug right in. Yep. Ooh, this is a good one. Uh, let's start with size 11, go all the way around. Uh, favorite camo pattern? Uh, I mean, multicam, I guess, because it, like, just flat fuck works yep. in a large spectrum of situations, or situations about large spectrum of terrain types. Um, I'm a hater on, like, old BDU camouflage where they call it God's plaid or some shit. Yeah. I hated that. Like, <laughs> yeah, woodland. Yeah, woodland. Like, woodland camouflage, it's just, it's not as good. Like, I'm a performance guy, you know You guys are Bill's feelings. I don't want... <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I mean, I got it. It's just like, I don't... I'm not nostalgic, you know what I mean? Like, I just want performance, so uh, multicam is it for me. Yeah. You know, multicam or, like, working at night, uh, just, like, uh, um, wolf gray. It's, mm -hmm. it's a solid color just to wear yeah. at night, but that's it. Pretty easy day, or just like rattle can your shit, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> like, like like I said, I'm a nobody man, but I do a lot of hunting in Florida, and multicam works amazing in Florida. So I'm a big turkey hunter, yeah, and I am 100 percent 
a fan of multicam. Like I will choose that over, like if you guys are hunters, moss oak or or real tree. Like I love the multicam. It really blends into the Florida atmosphere. But oh, yeah. that's the hunting world. So I'm not a door kicker or anything. Cool. Uh, my favorite is actually shorts and sandals and t-shirts. <laughs> Another Florida boy. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, it's blending into the environment I live. Yep. Uh, but really, uh, like if we're looking at like actual patterns or whatever, um, I'm digging Tropic, actually. The Multicam Tropic stuff we, we got recently. And, uh, mm-hmm. and it, it's kind of cool. And I was surprised as like how good it blended with the Multicam, like okay. regular Multicam. Yeah. And, uh, it's like a couple shades yeah. darker, right? All that was pretty around. solid. So Ooh, we just had a, we had a huge photo really shoot. Vivid. We just had a hit big photo shoot recently, and that was the camo that was the used. Pattern the, choice, the pattern yeah. of the choice, and Eric is grabbing it right now. Le that's actually Tropic. that's pretty legit. Multicam Tropic. It looks really good with your standard multicam too, intertwined. Yeah. It looks very good. How about you, Og? So uh, I am also on, on Team Multicam here, but I do not have as interesting reasons as everybody else. Um, I am still uh, I, I'm still you know currently active in the Army National Guard, so Multicam is the pattern I can use. Uh, so I get everything in Multicam. Yeah, oh. I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna go on a technicality here, <laughs> and I'm gonna say that Ranger Green is my favorite camo. Uh, because it was what I wore all my time. Um, and I think it just looks really good when you're head to toe in Ranger Green. However, my second choice is going to be uh, Multicam Tropic. And it also looks very good with Ranger Green intertwined there. So, uh, yeah. But you won't catch me in that stuff often either, just like Duffy. Even on the range, I'm in jeans, vans, and a t-shirt. Um, unless it's just required, then I'll throw on a plate carrier or whatever, but uh, yeah, I, I, don't do the mold, I don't do the camo stuff much anymore. Um, I'm low reg, low life. <laughs> Probably from a like nostalgic kind of fun point of view, I like the Ertles. You know, mm. the Ertle Green and Ertle RDF, which yeah, were the... Cool. I mean, they're cool, cool colors. They're very you know, Tropic, you know, Tropic is inspired heavily, I think, by Ertle Green and RDF led to, to Woodland. But um, I think from a functional point of view, I'm kind of like along the lines of Eric, like I like the old Jungle Fatigues. And that was a uniform that I wore a couple times. And it's one of those uniforms, if you watch it after about being in a day, whatever your environment you're in, you're going to look like that environment. That uniform had crazy ability to just suck up dirt, mud, dust, sand. The only thing it wouldn't suck up is snow. And, well, it would, but it wouldn't help you camouflage in the snow. But I was really amazed, like, going to NTC or something, and you're wearing, you know, jungle fatigues, and the next thing you know is, they're you tan. know, they're, they're tan. And, and you, you know, you go, to, and then you go to JRTC, and you're wearing Op 4, you're op four there, and, it, and it, the green just worked. And, and, you know, it's kind of simplistic, but if you really look at you know, uh, guys wearing it and, and the environments they're in. Um, it's a pretty capable pattern for not being a pattern, like a bird. Cool. Yeah. You should just, just should have just incited a riot and said that UCP. Was, yeah, yeah. Was Man, the, the, <laughs> well, you, the funny thing is, like, yeah, UCP, I remember getting in these arguments because I was, I, you know, I grew up with M81 and then we went UCP and then we went multicam. And, and the, the break that occurred was like, no science went into no. into woodland. It was just like, yeah, it looks cool. And then when there was money involved because of the GWAT, <laughs> the whole lot of colors. We yeah, well, no, they got they like literally got brain scientists involved because if you ask a career sniper like how do you camouflage yourself, he's gonna be like, oh, you need to blend in with your surroundings. If you ask a fucking brain scientist how do you camouflage yourself, he's gonna say you need to fuck Defeat with the human eye. eye. Yeah. So it's like two separate takes on on how to do the job hmm. and so like when we got when we got acus first issued to us like we went out and we're like yeah like if the dude you put him in a wood line and he doesn't fucking move yeah, yeah. that you won't pick him up but as soon as he moves and your brain puts together that picture then you can't lose him it's like it's done i got him okay. but yeah. i will yeah. tell you one of the cool classic patterns though was the old dcu with the woodland like 
gear over, over. Oh, three color oh. desert? Yeah, three yeah. color with yeah. the yeah. woodland, like, color 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 or whatever. I got a bunch of three that, color That, that, that stuff was, like... That's, that, that's, yeah. that's just, like, an aesthetic, though. I think yeah, that's, what, that, I think that's, that's just, what the kids call a mood. That, yeah. that just looked fucking <laughs> that's what the kids yeah. Or, like, before that, they had the chocolate chip. The chocolate yeah. chip. The yeah. desert storm yeah. chocolate chip. That yeah. shit's nice, bro. It should be, like, your thing, man. Chocolate chip, bro. Chocolate yeah, chocolate. You should be rocking yeah, chocolate, 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 chocolate chip. chocolate chip? I don't know. Chocolate chip? I don't know. Chocolate chips, guys. <laughs> we, should make him, like, chip. we should make some gear for him to be like a whole bunch of little chocolate chip cookies all over him. <laughs> yeah. That'd be awesome. <laughs> oh, I need a helmet cover with just, just chocolate chips. It looks like a chocolate chip cookie. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, you know, I'll say while, while we're just shooting the shit, I mean, you know, camouflage. And, and so I gave the boring answer about what my favorite camouflage is, but like even. Like I spent a lot of time like rattle canning guns and stuff like that, but like like trying to figure out you know how to how to do like the right mix of uh, of like the macros versus you know versus the hard edges and and you know I mean really camouflage is about and and, and this is applicable over into night vision is is you know it's kind of what 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 Chris was saying is less about. Uh, less about blending in with your surroundings is breaking up your outline and, and recognizable shapes. I think that a lot of people, uh, when they think of camouflage and when they think about camouflage, you, you know, it's really focused on like looking like something else right. uh, versus um, <laughs> you, you know breaking up that outline, breaking up that I'm recognizable <laughs> shape. Um, <laughs> and we all missed the logical answer and I've done a night push. vision class or night vision forum is yeah. desert night camo man yeah. <laughs> desert night camo yeah, yeah. Doesn't, DNC is good man dude, shadows it doesn't throw back a bunch of IR light be alright yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I mean that that shit was supposed to defeat like Gen One Russian, Russian technology yeah, yeah. and and you know it's still it kind of Gucci that. though. It's still I nice. mean it's, it's cool. I mean it, what's not Gucci these days? You you find <laughs> you, you find anything Flat. fucking obscure. Flat. You find anything fucking obscure and and, and you post enough, you you do enough Instagram posts about it and and it's the cool hot shit that somebody has and people are no. crashing fucking websites to buy plate carriers and ridiculous esoteric camouflage well, there's a, pattern. There's a cool question, plate carriers. We got everything else covered. What plate yeah. carriers? Are We're good. We're not going to talk well, about it. Yeah, let's talk about EDC. knives. We get a lot, we get a lot of questions coming in about EDC knives. Oh, bro. Wow. Bro. Bro. Who is EDC watching? Knives? Bro. Do you, do you guys want to get real on knives? So if you don't know who I am, I work for Emerson oh, wow. Knives. I've been with Emerson Knives for 16 years. Um, I am a huge Emerson Knives fan. So yeah. if you want to carry a knife, carry an Emerson. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Um there's a lot of knife companies out there. I'm friends with a lot of knife companies out there. They make great knives, but overall, um, an Emerson knife, 100% made in America, all the way down to the washers, the screws, the steel, the G10, family-owned, family-run. Ernie and Mary are the greatest people you'll ever meet. Um, great freaking knife. Um, but, I mean, Strider knives, Strider's awesome. Mick and Dwayne are good, good buddies of mine, but... Um, I mean, I, I can go through so many knives, but commander. Mick follows me on Instagram. What's that? Giving away a commander, right? Oh, we right? are giving away. A we are giving away. Yeah. Is it a what, standard commander? So, I'm, <laughs> we're giving away a commander. Don't know if it's a mini commander, standard commander, or super commander, but regular commander. So, I, but, I have an Emerson Wave that I bought in 1998. I yeah. still have it. It's fucking awesome. Though. Fuck yeah. Yeah. The, yeah. Do you mind if I do like a little plug? Nah, go ahead. That's the new new. Snap it, bro. Dude, ready for this? The first. Um, Emerson knife auto ever made by Ernest Emerson. So other manufacturers licensed Ernie's designs and made autos out of it, but this is actually the first Emerson auto ever made. It's so little. <laughs> um, called a bull shark. Awesome little blade. Really is. And from what I understand, it's legal in every state because of the size. It's yeah. so short. <laughs> but dude, it's awesome. But yeah, I'm sorry. That was my knife pitch. Yeah. I'm Emerson, sorry. Emerson makes great stuff. Um, Good people. I own a couple of different things. Um, a lot of people don't know this, but uh, every year, the owner of TMEC uh, gifts a custom knife That's cool. to the employees and friends of the company. Um, uh, those are custom made by ProTech, which a lot of those are uh, Emerson blades. Yep. Um, Emerson right. design made by ProTech. Yep, exactly. Yep. Um, awesome blades. ProTech awesome, is good people. Awesome uh, knives. I carry those just because, you know, out of, uh, out, of, out of everything I have, I have the most of those. I don't hard use my knives. Um, 
But again, uh, those are some of my favorites for sure. Along we'll, with Emerson. I'm gonna give one more uh, Gooseworks. Gooseworks Arena. Did, did he, he awesome did blades. Sure. Check check them out. Um, no, uh, really check them out. Do me a favor. Check out we'll Goose Works Arena. But I can talk about knives for hours and hours and hour. Yeah, yeah. There you go. Stop yeah. arguing for knives. Strider SF. Uh, yeah, I'm a diehard Strider guy for for my EDC knife. And Dude, they're the, tough as nails. Because I like this because it matched the fixed blade that I wore. Yep. And plus, like, I'm loyal because Mick Strider is just awesome, dude. Dude, so, makes a character, man. Yeah. Well, Just he, laugh. He support he supported where I came from heavily. Great dude. Makes he good makes peoples, man. Fantastic knives. Yes. Shout out to Mick. Mick follows me on Instagram. I appreciate you, man. <laughs> <laughs> makes some good dude. They make some killer. Um, Josh, the guy that kind of the, the main two main guy at Strider. He uh, he's a good guy. I mean, I can like I'm, dude. We can sit here and talk for hours about knives. I got <laughs> yeah, a knife. We got, we got, yeah, I'm we sorry. Got fire go, like, Everybody's looking at me like, shut up, Kane. Kane's like, I'm back. Well, so sorry. I'm the outlier when it comes to knives. Like I I don't carry a fixed blade, um, mainly because I realized I always use the points for like screwdriver stuff, yeah. and I was always trying to, to pry shit. I was always using them for, for things they're not supposed to be that used for. That will void your warranty. <laughs> yeah. So so what I started carrying was just a multi-tool. Oh, there you go. So I carry a Leatherman that has a screwdriver, it has a knife, and it has a set of pliers on there so that I can do everything I do. I mean, oh, we used it today just setting up setting up the dang clay. Not as cool as that. So 14 and 1. Or we can go really cool and go with VZ Grips that's making G10 knives. How many fucking knives do you have on you? Bro, you yeah. have no idea. He's so, obviously a knife nerd. Sorry. So yeah. along, with, a little bit. With, uh, <laughs> along with that mention, um, Black Triangle. Oh, yeah. Um, look them up on Instagram. They make great G10 um, low-vis stuff. If you want something that doesn't have metal in it, something for deep concealment. Um, Look up Black Triangle. I have a couple of their of their knives. I think I have like the Mark II or the Mark III or something like that. Anyway, cool dudes over there. Um, check out Black Triangle if you're looking for something low vis. That's a, a G10, just kind of a, a stabby um, self defense type tool. Plus, they come in really cool VHS cassette tape <laughs> cases, and that's probably one of the best. Like. Marketing or packaging how long, how long that I've seen oh, for anything. Really. Fifteen years. Oh Jesus! Yeah. On, uh, yeah. So, I mean, before before the TNVC oh, knives, I think I carried a Spider Co yes. Endura for yeah, about ten years because that's what I had gotten issued back in yeah. the day. Spider Co, man. And uh, like yeah, I, I a man can only have so many hobbies, <laughs> and I just never got into knives. I, I, I don't think the same way. Yeah, I mean, I got some people do. Load of knives. I'm sure we all do. I got a fucking drawer full of knives, but. That's just not my lifestyle anymore, man. I don't carry that shit every day with me anymore. Sharp, pointy things are awesome. Just saying. Yep. As you can tell. Sorry. <laughs> cool. uh, favorite covert tactical pants? I like... Uh, what is a covert tactical pants? Is this for like the five, like like the five eleven crew here? I think maybe like low Damn. vis pants or shot whatever. Shot shirt. <laughs> so the five eleven tactical pants. I like uh, I like anything denim because that's what like ninety percent of people wear is just jeans. Mm -hmm. um, if you're wearing khakis, you're either a nerd or a fed that's trying to look plain clothes. <laughs> um, so I wear regular, yeah, <laughs> fucking nerd. I mean, I'm uh, <laughs> fucking nerd. St still not fully understanding the question. I think they mean like low vis things that For still pants, have the capability. Yeah. I mean, if you want to be low vis, you wear what everybody around you is wearing. Shorts, flip flops, and flip -flops. If you yeah. if you want to be tactical, be tactical. Or if you want, you know, if you want something practical, See. then just wear practical. Wait, are you pants. saying you can't be See. covertly tactically practical? I disagree. <laughs> I'm so confused. I disagree. Wow. But then again, I come from a background of having to be undercover or plain clothes. So having having a little bit featured. A little bit more of a featured pant that also caters to holding a spare mag and stuff like that, or even like a rifle mag is something that I looked for for a long time. And finally, uh, a couple companies that I can name make really good things. Uh, Tactical Distributors, their TD apparel, a lot of their denim. Um, they have like the Legend pant, I think uh, stuff like that. 
they all have like built-in mag pockets and stuff that you can't really see, which is cool. Um, and then there's a company called Prism. Um, you can look them up on Instagram. It's PR1SM underscore US. Never heard of Prism. Them. They make a great low vis pant. Um, probably one of the best that I've ever seen and used. I'm wearing um, the Adaptive X ones right now. Yep. These so, dudes, never heard of um, <laughs> So, Wait. or just <laughs> Carhartt clearance uh, Car cargo pants. <laughs> yeah. Matt Myers said uh, Kirkland brand sweatpants, which <laughs> I'm feeling you on that one, Matt. I'm feeling you on that one, bro. They're comfy, that's for I sure. Mean, I mean, Kirkland, uh, you know, don't tear your nose up in Kirkland, man. Kirkland makes good yeah. shit. I'm it's not old. knocking it. You know, so, so, so going back to a previous question, Kirkland used to have a fucking, they, they used to have Kirkland light beer. And it yeah. was sold for twenty one dollars and ninety nine cents for a forty eight pack. And it just said light and beer. It, on yeah, it, it just said shit. light yeah. beer. I used to yeah. buy the shit out of this Never that stuff. It's, I, I guess it's been discontinued, but for for some reason I thought you were gonna say Kirkland used to make night vision. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I was like, is he really? and it was twenty one ninety nine. Twenty one ninety nine. Sold out. I'm like, dang, yeah. Kirkland. Damn. What happened, girl? You got bought out by L three. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, right up by ATM, man. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking funny as shit. Um, oh, shit. Let's go with uh, what's everyone's carry piece. Um, I carry a uh, Glock 17 with a spare mag and some form of medical gear. That's me. Cool. Uh, I carry an Agency Arms Glock 19. Um, <clears throat> like. Pretty much all decked out because like why would i want to do work with something inferior and uh obviously i carry med as well in a tiny little pouch from dark angel medical uh but i Good dude, i put i put my own stuff in it i don't use his little pocket pouch stuff sorry carrie <laughs> yeah but i love <laughs> carrie's good peeps yeah, you know, yeah i like carrie a lot everybody loves carrie um i carry a Glock 19 and a Smith & Wesson revolver, a little 38 revolver. Um, and seven knives. And seven, seven knives. And seven seven three of which cannot be found by experts. And a yeah. bring, those, <laughs> bring those rookie numbers up a little. Oh my god, you know, can, can, oh. you got a boot knife, don't you? I, 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 <laughs> you got a a that's just not the knife. <laughs> <laughs> you always have a sock beard. Yeah. 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 Sock <laughs> beard. <laughs> one is none, two is one. Uh, Didn't know what they did in uh, what was sodas in that movie Bad Boys with Sean Penn? They fucking put uh, fucking sodas in a pillowcase and beat the shit out of that guy. <laughs> That's why sock beer is coming handy, bro. <laughs> extra sock, extra beer. Sweet. Just beat the shit out of somebody with a uh, beer. Yeah, uh, if I'm in board shorts here in Savannah, it's a Glock 48, and uh, otherwise it's a Glock 34 with an RMR and an X300. Dude, you have room good. for a 34? Dude, like, today's, I motherfucker, bro. today's I really like, don't. holster technology, I mean, yeah. like, three, four oh, years yeah. ago, I would have been, like, Damn. fucking crazy, but, like, I'm with a way. filter floodlight and a good yeah. belt, like, that's fucking, oh, yeah. I don't even notice it, dude. Yep. It's, like, it's a big fucking handful of guns. Skinny I'm with, guy? Well, I'm fat with, guy. I'm with work. Duffy, man. Like, no capability is yep. disabling. So right. like, why would I not have as right. many capabilities I could suck yeah. and stick down the Thank front of my you, pants? Bro. Thank yeah. you, bro. Thank you. Sniper tall. pistol, bro. Yeah, yeah. You're tall, so you can, <laughs> you can carry shit like that. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I get it that, like, not everybody has a body type to do that. Before so I met before. Chris, I didn't Mine's know they stacked it that high. This motherfucker is just tall. Oh, well, it's like an 8 inch. What about you, Bell? What do you carry? Uh, a rape whistle? Yeah, a rape whistle. A rape whistle and a cell phone. And a roll of quarters. Pocket sand. sand. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Pocket sand. Yeah. If you haven't heard of uh, Big Tex Outdoors, yeah. Ike is sends awesome. pocket sand with your order. Are you sure? Yeah, it's yeah, it awesome. Oh, that's yeah. awesome. That's great. I think I have like seven or eight packs of pocket sand that's sitting great. on a shelf right now. Pocket sand. Yeah. Yeah. You know what would be worse than pocket sand? Fucking getting glitter thrown in your eyes. I just pocket just glitter. glitter, bro. It, it doesn't travel as far. 
Yeah, but it will mess you up. You have up. to be real close you to do it. You can't get that shit out of your beard. Pounded glitter and yeah. chunk it in <laughs> face. It's stuck in your beard. And, you and then, and then you're going to go home and get tomorrow, in trouble. Or, I'm sorry, tomorrow morning, we're what? buying a pack of glitter, we're buying a pack no, of sand, not. and we're going to test it. No, we're not. Not around me. But the thing about glitter... The thing is, with glitter, you can't get rid of it. You can't get rid of glitter. And you're going to go home, and then you thought you were in trouble when it got thrown on you? Wait, you're letting that person that was trying to assault you go home? No, 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 I'm saying you go Weird. home. <laughs> yeah, glitter, glitter's like head lice. It's always, it's always all over everything. It's always bothering everybody. <laughs> it's the herpes. It's always the herpes. bothering everybody. That shit won't it's go away. It's the herpes of the crafts world. It's, yeah, it will never go away. Oh, it's like and it keeps coming back. <laughs> you want to fuck with your buddies? Fun. Throw some glitter all over their gear. You want to fuck with me? That that will go absolutely ape shit over. You gotta be that. fucked up, you man. You can never get it all. I'd be really upset a little bit. Yeah, oh, yeah. All right, I got an idea for tomorrow. Gets in your eye. <laughs> Good fucking luck. Glitter in your eye. Good luck, bro. How do you get that yeah. out? You just have to cry it out. You just fuck it. Like one night, it'll just happen. <laughs> <laughs> like after the corner's you, poking me. After you've abraded your fucking cornea until oblivion, <laughs> one night you're gonna be sleeping and that bitch just goes, whoop, comes out and you're like, fuck me. That took. That took a year. I was going to say you're talking from experience, aren't you? Oh, I've got glitter in my eye, dude. <laughs> oh, no. He's, 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 I think you have yeah, two little girls, don't you? Close you close those tassels. Yeah. Oh, the tassels, yeah, yeah, man. You got, those dude, are so annoying. Glitter's every fucking wear, bro. Art, art Take the tassels down. down. Yeah. No fucking No down. tassels. I'm sorry, Elgie. I was cutting in on your time. Oh, sorry. I mean, there, there ain't no time to cut in on. Hit I mean, I got, I've got a... Uh, wait, wait, where were you talking about? Hurry. All right. <laughs> Can we have your hockey button? Carry it, carry it, carry it. I carry it foul under my jacket. I mean, I've got a. Carry it foul under my Carry it foul under my jacket. I want to see you draw that thing out. <laughs> That's yeah, great. Yeah. Carry Samras. He carries cookies. Yeah. I do carry cookies. cookies. <laughs> like Ninja I, Stars. I don't waste cookies like that. I was about to say that. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Sacrilege. Terrible. It's wasteful. <laughs> but if you don't have a, a TNVC cookie pouch, you best get one. Yeah, I, oh, yeah, I know where you can get one. Pouch. Get that shit. Yeah, I know where you can. I am so stealing that pouch from you, bro. Which one? That one. They're not Boop. another Look at that. There you go. Dude, that is, bro. <laughs> Bam. I don't know if I told you, but I love you. <laughs> oh, yeah, he might be. Uh... <laughs> he knows he looks. <laughs> I'm going to make one that says not cods. I'm going to just put it right here. <laughs> <laughs> that one glows in the dark if you guys didn't know. Are you for real? Yeah. She will glow in the dark, man. I made it specifically so that the TSA could tell me, hey, what's in this pouch? And right. they can read the top. I'll you fire away because I got a really good one coming up here. I mean, you know, it, it might it might be sacrilege uh, to even admit this, but I don't it's... know that I would say that I have an everyday carry. If I need to carry, I've got a uh, Glock 17. Oh, but I spent a uh, large part of my life where pretty much everywhere I went outside the house was either a university or a government building. Um, so, and then I live in the country, and there's always a long gun in hand. So, rape whistle for him, too. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like you weren't willing to break some rules. <laughs> if I get clothes on, I got a gun on. Uh, toilet paper when you're wiping oh, your ass, on. over yeah. or under? Mm. Yeah, we all have to think. Yeah. Like, yeah. All right, so let me think about this. Wait, over, shower. What would be over versus over, under? Wait, over yeah, what? I'm not understanding Behind my question. back versus between my, like, b Behind the sack? I, I'm so confused. <laughs> I don't understand what he's asking. Can you wait? Can yeah. you more more asked yet. We need more a little more. Is, is there some visual aid to say. this? Over <laughs> or under. No. Oh no! Over or under, like on the roll. So oh, like, oh, oh, over. Dude, oh, over. Oh, over. 100% yeah. over. Yeah. Pat oh, over. says over. I will fight you if you do Whoever's under. Whoever's under yeah. is the fuck. The Dude. same. Yeah. Like I've heard it. Like uh. Oh, we don't put it over because the cat plays with it. I'm like, Anthony, shut the fucking door. You should do. Get rid of the cat, man. I mean, the, 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 the cat can the still cannon pull at it. <laughs> yeah, either way. Your cat takes a dump in the toilet? <laughs> like, why the fuck with the toilet paper? You, you, why you can, you, why, why would you, you have a cat? cat? You can train cats to, uh, you, you, you can train, train cats, cats to, to use the toilet. You can train them to, like, yeah. be putting cannons in I'm shop. sorry, I'm a dog yeah. lover. You can dog also lover. not teach them anything and then just watch them be very, very mean to you every day. Fuck you, human. Feed me. Fuck you, human. Pet me. Right. Me. No, don't pet me anymore. <laughs> 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 
That's when they're actually training you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I'm not a fan of cats. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but you're got? talking about wiping your ass. No, 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 no. It's over. 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 Like, I don't, I don't know anybody that goes Who? between their legs That was such a foreign concept to me. How do you do that? Who is fucking... Seriously. Who's got that long of an arm? You know who does that? <laughs> Women. That's who. <laughs> Next question. <laughs> Class three lasers for civilians. Yes. We've not been we've, over this before. We fucking wish, bud. Listen. Uh, they're available. Class Megan. three lasers. If you want a class three laser, get them all. Class three lasers are regulated by the FDA. It's it's not the ATF, and they are regulated by the FDA for sole virtue of the fact that they are considered to be a, a medical device. It's not. It's it's a weird accident of uh, of regulation that they ended up under the FDA, and the FDA has no. The FDA probably doesn't even know that they regulate them. And therefore, they probably have no interest in ever deregulating them. And there's not exactly lobbyists or political action groups that are going after the FDA to get class three, class three B IR lasers made legal for commercial. You know, there, there's at least one person, and he's like Milton from like Office Space. He's got red stapler, and they keep on putting them like lower and lower in the building, and they just leave him alone. And he's all proud to be, you know, the, the laser guy at FDA. Um, I will Matt say Myers this. Says, oh yes, they do. What's that? Matt Myers says, oh yes, they do. Do we don't care about them? Yeah. yeah. I'm at, oh yeah. I'm at. Matt would know. He said he's tried. Fucking shout out to Matt. Matt Big shout out to Matt for the community, especially trying to get uh, things that are considered. Yeah. Uh, classified lasers or restricted lasers into the hands of civilians. And, and pushing that. Which is why they designed them all. And, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, yep. And the mall for the C1 Plus is more powerful than a full power PEC 15. And people will be like, no bullshit, no, I've seen it. it we're not gonna <laughs> lie to you. The fucking data is there. It, the, the, the mall, shit. get them all. Get them all. Get them all. all. Stop being poor, get them all. Get them all. You can pay them with the same um, But while we're on that topic, <laughs> um, I think before 2009, that was never even such a fucking thing as a civilian legal laser. Yeah. Yeah. At all. Yeah. No. No. Um, well, there wasn't a commercially yeah, marketed yeah. Right. civilian legal laser. For rifles, anyway, for sure. In IR. Yeah, yeah. and infrared. Now, of course, they, invisible they spectrum, the, they have a well, different... They had the one from uh, from Lethal Weapon for the Beretta. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, no, that was a fucking biz laser. Yeah, but that wasn't I mean, IR. But but so, so like, red. the... the yeah, that's like 1980... Yeah. 45 long Well, no, so, so, like, the, the Pac-4... <laughs> Y'all remember the old Pac 4s. The old Pac 4s yeah. are, are 1 milliwatt or 0.7 milliwatt nominal uh, output. Uh, but so, so like, the, the Pac 4 is technically a class 1 laser, but it was never marketed to, to civilians. It was never sold openly uh, on the commercial market. Um, so they are not. There, they, so so it was it, it existed. It was a technically classified as class 1 laser, but it was never right. a commercial product. Which I think is where you I were think headed. that's where they're yeah exactly. I'm just saying, uh, people like B.E. Myers and TNBC for that matter. We're continually trying to sway uh, manufacturing and push the envelope on stuff like that. Get the best gear in the hands. I mean, people people one time beat us up because there was a patch on our website that said that it was restricted. But I mean. <laughs> We're selling you everything else. It's a fucking piece of something that doesn't even do anything anymore for anyone. So we're doing a lot more than you think. So, so are companies like B.E. Myers. And again, shout out to Matt. Matt, love you, bro. I mean, you know, I, I, again, before the mall, I, I, I would say, you know, maybe I would understand it a little bit more. But... I mean, you know, again, like you. And we have a whole segment on IR lasers coming up later this week where we talk about a lot of this stuff. But probably the people that are watching us now several hours after the broadcast uh, are probably not going to be the exact same people that are watching the, that video <laughs> later on. Well, they better week. be. Um, you, you know, I, it's... It, 
the the illuminator the illuminator performance of the mall i i would put you know on par with the pec 15 you know 45 milliwatt and pec 15 at pl i i would say that it it, it sits right there with the class 3b version um and so you, you know you, the performance is available to you yeah it is and people are like well how did why did b Myers do that how do they do that and what magic the, yeah and I don't know the ins and Wizard outs. Tears. If you want to know that, call them and, and ask them that. A lot of that's proprietary, and they're not going to talk about a lot of it. But also, because fuck them, that's why, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I think we're going to wrap it up at midnight. So we've got a solid, like, eight more minutes for any kind of last-minute questions you want to get in. Reaction um, to first time using night vision. What was it? Say that again. Reaction to first time using night Reaction? Night. Reaction to first time using oh, night wow. Awesomeness. Oh, like dude. Our reaction. Fucking awesome. Yeah, I mean, no, not awesome. Yeah, I was. Uh, well, what was your first? What was your first night vision to, that you looked at? Ninety-eight with uh, seven deltas. Oh yeah. And okay. It was like what the like I can't see a goddamn thing. Yucky. Like what? I see some lights going on, but they're like, hurry the fuck up. Like, okay. Like yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mine was just awesomeness. I'm sorry. I, put them on, I just I looked around. I'm like, holy shit! I can see it at night. Woo what was your first? What was your first device that you looked at? Uh, that's a damn good question. It was dual tubes, but I don't. I, I couldn't tell you. I don't know. Well, there you go. Yeah, we started yeah. with dual tubes. Yeah, yeah. It, was, it was years ago. So I don't, I, don't, I don't know. I really don't know. Yeah, I started with a 14, and the first time I put them on was like that little fam they do in basic, and uh, and it was cold, wet, raining. <laughs> And we were like, well, okay, cool, I saw it. Here, hand it to the next guy. <laughs> so, yeah. there was a, it wasn't that awesome. Um, but when I got to Battalion, we got to play a little bit more, actually use them, actually learn about them. And then, uh, and then it obviously got a lot better. Did you do the fire team trail there mm -hmm. at Fort Benning? Well, we yeah. went to, uh, I use. Uh, we did the, uh, the Darby Mile with yeah. it. Right? That's what I used to, to integrate. Uh, yeah. New deep nuts. yeah, I mean, mm -hmm. I, I think my experience is probably similar to uh, Chris and John's seven Bravos. Uh, I got handed them with, with pretty much no instruction whatsoever, like, like, like one set for four dudes to try and figure out what the hell was going on? I don't think it was even that dark when they handed them to us, uh, and and I, I I just really didn't know what the fuck was going on. Yeah, I think mine was seven. I can't remember Bravos or Deltas, but yeah, sevens. I thought they were really rad. Um, and then um, fourteen shortly after, and then it's just kind of been all downhill from there but yeah fuck yeah man night vision's cool it's a superpower being able to see in the dark is a superpower that shit's awesome i never get yeah. tired of it i'm yep. sorry to cut you off you and i was the first time i ever used nods in the cave i'm that's sorry right yeah that's that's so you would know yeah sorry that was, that was sorry. a long time ago that was a long time ago that was, those were uh They're, sentinels yep sentinels first pair i can remember was seven alphas yeah mm. They had the they had the the helmet. Gross, they had the, the they had the they had the pads right things. here. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and like, Hello, the, Clarice. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, so you turned them on and they're like. Oh, it actually made the noise. You yeah. pull yourself. Man, yeah. no, it, nice. like they were horrible. They had these like there's a head harness thing and you had like these pads right Smushing here. Faces. But they later figured out that the like there's a pressure point here that will make you sleepy. Oh, nice. And so like nice. you put the nods on and it's like everybody's like falling asleep with them on and it's like because like they 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 later figured out that there's pressure pads there. I'm sorry. But then we were watching uh um uh what you gonna call it today cliffhanger. Oh yeah, and, uh, yeah, yeah, the guy had uh, he had sevens seven, on. Yeah, he yeah. had sevens on, but yeah. like it was great, man. It had little 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 real time illumination data on the right. Yeah, yeah. Had yeah. Elevation. <laughs> and it was and changing it's like so, yeah. uh, like thirty four percent to like fifty eight percent down to forty two percent, and it's like wow. I love that well, in Hollywood. Whenever funny, there's like a night vision scene, there's always like little blinking. Yeah, fucking yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, they, they have all the like, data in there, and <laughs> that's the and movies, yeah. bro. That's a good segue. All right, so that's let's go around and let's talk about what our favorite action or 
uh, like military movie is. Uh, a military movie? Well, well military just movie? action movie in, movie in general. And from this crowd, you're going to get a lot of 80s yeah, right? stuff. It's going to be tough. Yeah. Just because yeah. the so 80s we're going, had the best movies ever. We're going action, not mil- action movies. Let's just do action. <clears throat> yeah, all right. Oof, that's going to be a tough one, bro. I'll lead off. I got do it, man. Ma- Master and Commander, Far Side of the World, man. Yeah. Dude, we, we just watched that last week because it's on uh, Amazon right now. And uh, Laura had never seen it. And I was like, this is a great action movie. I don't movie. think I've seen that. Oh, yeah. it's awesome, man. Master you get Commander. Master and Commander, Russell Crowe. Uh, yeah, sailing movie from the early 1800s. Yeah, man. Yeah, it's a good movie. It's a great movie, man. That little <laughs> little midshipman at the end of the at the end of the movie, like taking charge. Mm-hmm. I'll go uh, Cobra. Oh, oh yeah. 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 yeah, Cobra oh, was oh, probably yeah. my favorite. Well, what was, what was your catch line to Cobra? There's like some little tagline underneath it. It's like it's where he picks up like the the, the no, but it's under the center uh, and He's like, hey asshole. Yeah. <laughs> there was, yeah. There was yeah. a uh, no, it, oh, it's a. Uh, Crime's the disease and he's the cure. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Cobra was fucking sick because on that fucking, on that little submachine gun he had, he had that yeah. laser that was yeah, laser yeah, that fucking yeah. 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 gun. That's right. That bitch was bad. I remember that from the well, movie. Well, no, that, movie was, that poster, was an old Surefire, though, yeah. wasn't it? Old old laser pot products, Fountain in California. I I'm think so. Oh, yeah. Oh. yeah. They, they've been making those things for a long time. And that wasn't even a Class 3 laser. Like a Class, like, half. Yeah, Cobra by far, man. One, one million million of my favorite, favorite movies. <laughs> funny. It's like, it's like it, our, our pointers <laughs> today that you use in classrooms are more powerful than that. <laughs> yeah. What about you, Augie? I mean, does aliens count? Yes. Yeah. yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. 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 All right. Yeah. That's, that, that's it then. Strong, strong. That, that, that's me. Aliens is a damn good movie. I, I actually, really so, so. No, Maybe, weird, that's right, but I like comedies that are actions too. Mm. So like True Lies. Oh, True Lies. That's that's one of my favorite. Another Jim Carrey Best, 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 yeah. best uh, uh, just The good. Jamie Lee Curtis, like yeah. stripped down. Yeah. Part she did. She did a little strip scene. She dropped the mic out of her. Best uh, good yeah. stuff. Good stuff. Was yeah. filmed down. Yeah. Best Arnold movie. Yeah, it was. It was. It blew up the Blew up my bridge. Yeah, bastards. Um, I'm a geek on 007, so I would say. Sean Connery, I'm a huge fan of, but I also like Daniel Craig, so I would say Skyfall is probably one of my favorite oh, like action that's a, movies. That's pretty good. Yeah, I'm sorry, I'm a double O7 good, fi- good fight. That was a great, there too, man. great Warriors. plot and everything. So yeah, yeah, I would say Skyfall. Cool, cool, cool. Do, do knife nerds sit and watch watch movies the same way gun nerds do, and and just won't shut the fuck up about like all of the <laughs> so that stupid knife, knife stuff? What's so bad is I'm a, I'm a knife geek. He's not even sharpening. I'm a thing. knife <laughs> ground. I'm a yeah, gun yeah. geek and I'm a watch geek. So like I watch all these movies. And I'm just like that's wrong. So yeah, it's it's. I have a rough life. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> I'll never go to the movies with you. Oh, you never. Have I my gone wife. To... Oh never. God, I love my wife. She movies hates with movies with me. It's like, that's I not the real watch. Like, that's not the real life. That's not the real gun. Sorry, go ahead. Uh, I don't know. I, between the ages of eight and thirty-nine now, uh, probably Red Dawn. Ooh. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, that, like no shit. I remember watching Red Dawn the when I was a one, kid, right? and I was like, holy. Interesting fuck, fact geez. about Red Dawn: first PG-13 movie. Yeah. Really? Ever? Ever? Yeah. Ever? 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 And there's You're a big, full of random fun facts. Yeah, dude. dude I'm great at like trivia night, man. Like, Apparently. Like, yeah. um, there's a really trivia. good uh, YouTube uh, channel where the guy goes to um, Las Vegas, New Mexico, where they filmed it. Oh, and, yeah, yeah. And he, and he goes to all the places where they he filmed the movie. goes to Partisan's Rock. Yeah, yeah. Everything. Well, he goes to all the places in the town and says, this is where the scene was shot. Oh, and, no and, shit. Does okay. he carry yeah, an AK while he does it? No, and he doesn't yell yeah. over it. I don't like it. <laughs> yeah. I don't like it. Terrible review. <laughs> Terrible <laughs> review. <laughs> Now, one of the highlights of my career was being able to make my ambush class when I was a pre ranger instructor with a bunch of movie clips from Red Dawn. Like, it was in my PowerPoint. Wait, what's like, <laughs> like, everything, like... What's a flank? Yeah, yeah, exactly. He's like, <laughs> Check it out. Def L- away. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> what's an FLA? Yeah. Awesome. That's badass. We're, we're, we're Are we done? Up. We're getting to the sawing doing this. Well, that wraps it up for tonight. Thank you guys for joining us. Night two. Be sure to catch us tomorrow, same time, and all the I'm same sorry. bad channel, same bad time, same bad channel, same bad time. Yeah, thanks for having me, guys. NGI takeover. Yeah, NGI takeover. NGI takeover. So Only we're all. Hey, we, should, uh, we should have. We should all get beards tomorrow. Like, <laughs> already have one. So uh, I, I can't grow. This beards. is us yeah. signing off, um, and good night. We'll see you tomorrow. Stay safe. Ciao, ciao.